What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Gamer Podcast. I am your host, Antonius The Gamer. Once again, joined by my co-host, Super SSS Rank and Mikhail Smith. Fellas, welcome back to episode 11, The Director's Cut. Now, for those who are uh, joining us, we did actually film episode 11 over the weekend, but due to some unforeseen technical issues, it just didn't come out quite the way we wanted it to. And, you know, uh, Tim brought up the great point of, you know, just just emphasizing the need for quality. So we're back. Or we're going to give you guys a more in-depth take. We have even more information on the takes that we already had. And you guys are going to get, you know, the, the real true deal with episode 11. Now, to start off, you know, we've, we wanted to take a different approach this week, kind of working in reverse. You know, we normally start with the games and with the anime. But this week, we're going to start with the anime and with the games. Now, a lot of animes are, are coming on, you know, from their seasonal breaks. Some went on a temporary seasonal break. So, for example, Bleach Part 2 of 3 is currently airing um, as we're recording the pod. Then Jujutsu Kaisen came back, but only for the first half, and it'll resume at the end of the month. And, you know, so on and so forth. Vinland Saga Season 2 just wrapped up. You know, we have a lot of anime coming. And before we get into the, the, the breakdowns of, you know, some of these particular anime, how do you guys feel about this shift in the animation industry where a lot more uh, properties are going seasonal, you know, or we're getting parts of part one of season four, part two of season three, or uh, these little breaks in between? Um, It could work. It could work, depending on how you structure it. Mm. And I would say certain cutoff points. Okay. That would, Can you give me an example that, that, of like what you think works well okay. and what doesn't? Okay, when I look at um, you know Bleach, you know the final arc, I do see the need for like, all right, yeah, part one, part two, part three. Part one is when, you know, when the Quincy's invaded and everybody was just getting murked left and right. And, you know, the ending could be when, you know, when Ichigo fought uh, the head Quincy and then you found out he had some secret power. That could have been a good ending for part one. Part two, that's when everybody come back with new bunkai's, new powers and this and that. And then it's like, yeah, it's the, the, uh, the, the Soul Reaper Stripes box. Mm. And, you know, part, well... Well, that's a good question. Well, then what would be part three? I guess I part, think part three, three is, if, if I had to guess, is probably going to end when uh, the Quincy storm the uh, the Soul King, uh, the the Squad Zero's temple. Yeah, that would actually be good. Or, you know, since, you know, the manga did have a lot of plot holes. Okay. Mm-hmm. What was the final conclusion of this battle with everybody? Who died? Who is alive? Who's getting married and having kids? Like, give us that full closure all around. Okay. And that's what I think part three could be. But do you feel like, okay, do you, even in the sense of, like, Jujutsu Kaisen or even, you know, uh, a perfect example I want to say of comparison, look at Attack on Titan. We are now on season four, part three, part two, where... <laughs> they split the last third of Attack on Titan into two parts. We're getting the second part this fall. And, you know, the, the, at this point, the manga's been over for about two years now. Do you don't think that that takes away yeah. from some of the hype? Yeah, I do feel like, you know, at certain points, it, it, it can feel overextended. Like, you know, especially since I look at certain things like Netflix when they're talking about part, like, first of all, the example, like The Witcher, um, mm-hmm. season three, part one, part two. And I was like, bro, they were barely like, three weeks apart right barely so i was like why didn't you just release it all in one i mean i get it maybe you wanted to do some more fine and tuning on editing and stuff like that but you know in this day and age be real about it what was the actual reason that you had to split it up now if there's really reasons why that you need some more editing time okay by all means follow through but then if it's come to the point where it overly extends, bro, and when I say overly extends, I would say probably over three months, then that's, okay. that's when I'm like, okay. It's too much of a, of, of a pause. Yeah, okay. it's too much. Okay. Joy, what are your thoughts? What do you think about the um, idea of season I anime? mean, I, I technically think we already had that with Dragon Ball Z, Yu Yu Hakusho. We had seasonal anime. When I say that, like, we didn't get all the episodes back to back to back to back. So for us, when we had Toonami, there was a part where they kept playing reruns over and over and over again until they had. So we, we had. Okay. I see what you're, I see what you're saying. Had, you know, we had a seasonal um, we had a seasonal thing going on for us. Um, I think it's fine because 
Frieza Saga and Majin Buu. I did remember. They were, yeah, actually, the Fusion Saga. Because I remember when after when Vegeta killed himself, there was like a pause. And then the next thing was the Fusion Saga, teaching Goten and Trunks. Blase, blase, blase. So, like, you know what? You made a very fair point. Okay. Yeah. And so we had that. Um, and then with not only that, but with a lot of animes, they did that with tsunami. They they paused it. Like, how long did they? With how long were they on? Um, not any lobby. Uh, not Skypea. Uh, the sand, the sand place with the crocodile for oh, one piece. Uh, Alabasta. Alabasta. Yeah. They were on that forever until they came up with new episodes. So. I think it's um it's a good thing, uh, but for that situation, those that animation was already done. It was just being dubbed, so those mm-hmm. are probably the differences. But right now, since everything is as connected as it is, I think it's time. Plus, it gives the animators time to recuperate. Uh, you know, if you guys don't know, it's very demanding in Japan as an animator. Uh, oh, to heard. the point where it affects it, to the point where it affects their health. Mm-hmm. So I think taking breaks, having animes be seasonal, um, is is great. Um, not only that, but we get better quality. We don't have usually. to usually, hopefully, right? Uh, we don't have to get get what we got with uh, Dragon Ball Z Super's return. Um, Lord, yeah. When they that that was a disaster. So you know, you give your animators time, um, and. You can fix what needs to be fixed. If it has to be delayed, you do it. You know, so everything can uh, be presentable to when you finally release it. You leave. You leave with a good product. So I think it's. Well, um, I think it's good. I don't have a problem with it at all. Well, I guess the, the the deeper question I have is, you know, to your point, Joy, what you said about you know it being intense on the animators in Japan. You know, one of the things that I've come to find out, you know, again, just, you know, keeping in up to date with what goes on as much as I can, you know, when I have free time over there, it doesn't seem like it necessarily always translates into letting them rest. Right. So, for example, um, prior to starting the pod, you and I had multiple discussions about this with My Hero Academia when it came to the introduction of Mirio and his fight against uh, the Japanese Yakuza. And we're like, the episode of him fighting, but he has to be on the level of intensity that it was in the manga. And in the anime, we got a slideshow. <laughs> we got a slideshow of a fight. And it came out yeah. later that, oh, well, around this time, the same company that works on this on this seasonal anime had already started work on the next My Hero Academia movie. So they didn't have the staff available to animate it the way that it should have been done. Uh, One Punch Man season two. That's a seasonal anime. And around episode three or four, it takes a very, very sharp decline. And you come to find out it was chaos behind the scenes. They couldn't find a, a lead a director for the season. They couldn't, the, the studio wouldn't come back and so on and so forth. So, you know, you look at something like that and then you look at, for example, now granted, they're more of an outlier because they have the budget. But look at Toy with One Piece. We haven't had a bad One Piece episode since the Wano arc started. Not one. Every week, there's a someone's clipping something up from a, a episode of One Piece, and it's been about forty episodes of Wano already. And and you know what's so crazy about the Wano arc? It's not as bad as people are making it out to be. It's not. It's just very long. It's very long. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just not. Nah, as... nah. Be careful with that word "long," bro. Because, bro, Skypea. Skype. I was gonna say, <laughs> like, bro, oh my, like, yo, oh that, my, gosh. like oh. Skype. Skype took Frieza's old Planet Namek will die in oh. five minutes to biblical heights, bro. I was like, bro, this this song has no end. Like there is there is no end to this, bro. God, yeah, man. yeah. On a rewatch, you just jump straight to the end where he's fighting Andrew. Rue. Like, all right, I don't, I don't have time to. <laughs> and then, and then, what, what killed me, man? I'm watching the dub, and it's like they have a special language in how they talk. So, um, um, I have to hear this forever. <laughs> what, what, what would they say at towards the end? Um, they would be like, "Yeah, ganap, mm-hmm, up." No, oh, up. the little mannerism yeah. that they have, yeah, 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 yeah. the mannerism. Mm. So the, and that was that was destroying my eardrums. Yeah. Dog. I want yeah. to punch the screen, like <laughs> One, the the priest with the ball dragon that did the little dance every time, bro. My ears would start bleeding. 
Figuratively, you, of you, course. You know what that brought me to? <laughs> that episode of SpongeBob where he goes to um, rock bottom and they're like, yeah, dog. Yo, man, don't. Future animators and, and content take, yeah. creators. Please, please take heed. Yeah. Do not do this. Do not we do, do not this. need an arc of mostly just uh, world building. Please, 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 please. Of just dialogue every episode. Oh, man. But yeah, but I brought up One Piece to say, like, you know, you look at One Piece where every episode we're getting quality animation. You know, so it, it, it begs the question I of, like, okay, do you really need seasonal style. to get quality? I think the style of One Piece helps, man. In what way? It's super simple, dude. Mm. O- Oda's style is the most simple. He don't do no heavy. He does. He doesn't do every any heavy line work. Mm-hmm. There's no every. All the lines are consistently the same all around. There's no. Uh, it's not like Attack on. Not a, I wouldn't say Attack on Titan. It's not like a Berserk, where if mm. Guts is pointing towards the camera. The ink weight will be heavier towards the end, and as as far as it goes, at, the farther his uh, thumb is oh, away like from the, the, shading, the line, will yeah. thin out. Yeah, so it's not like a berserk. One Piece style is so simple. It's a, an animator's dream, technically, because they only got to do two shade tones. You know, um, everyone is not pretty much de- defined like that. The muscles aren't drawn uh, like Dragon Ball yeah. Z muscles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're like line here, line there, and that's it. Um, and it makes shell shading. Uh, a wonder because they know where to, they know where they want to put everything. Like, oh, we guys, we got just going for geometric forms and shapes for this one. So I think one piece style helps a lot. Whereas uh, you get something very stylized like a, um, a Dragon Ball Z, where you got to draw the hair and then you mm-hmm. got to draw um, bleach. Bleach, I would say, probably is simple too because the costume designs. Aren't as intense. Everybody has a set. I don't form. know. I don't know. I, I was gonna uh, um, save it for um, when we get into Bleach specifically, but uh, okay. I was catching up, and they did the the part where uh, uh, what's his name? The I can never get the captain's names. The dog captain, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, the part okay. where he, he uh, you know, he sacrifices his heart to his grandfather to get you know unlimited power, and they showed like his you know like basically undead Bankai. And I was watching it. I'm like, you know what? Kubo can really draw, yo. Like he could really draw. Like the yeah, just the yeah, detail yeah. of like the the Bankai form itself. Like it. That's not like that's not simple. It's simple maybe in like shading because a lot of it, like you said before, like it's like a lot of black and whites. But just mm-hmm. the detail of the character designs, like even like the little hairpins that they'll have for like Byakuya and stuff like that. Like that's not simple. And I no, imagine it, it, no, it's, it's it, a headache animation wise. One Punch Man is a headache. That's a nightmare. The first season? Uh, oh, yeah. Other than Genos, like, <laughs> no, who else has a complicated design? No, no. You had many complicated designs. You have both, both Boy Foy. You have um, that ape. Then you have... Um, the. It's the landscapes. It's the depths of One Punch Man that'll drive you crazy. And then the mm. effects... Like the scaling, the scaling of one, yeah, because yeah, it's, it's it's there's no still shots. The still shots are only done with finishes. Other than mm-hmm. that, it's consistent movement with One Punch Man. To do Saitama walking and then the speed of sound, Sonic sound is is hovering around. You get a three sixty view of him just looking around from from a, a crazy angle. That's a nightmare. Mm. The camera's not doing a, a, a side panel. It's going from Right to left to an awkward um, in between Z and Y axis. Axis. That's you know that's a nightmare for an animator man. And then you yeah. have to do side from a looking up, and you got to get the perspective right. Then the fight with Boros. You know, I mean that that was, that was yeah, that's yeah, an, you yeah. know that. But <laughs> even Geno's fighting the mosquito lady. Even Geno's fighting the mosquito lady. That was mm. that was crazy too. But yeah, um. I, I, I think um, One Piece's style contributes to why um, they can pump out so many. Um, why it could be, you know, it's effortless almost, you know, because it's just it, Oda has a very simplistic style, man, and it works for him. Yeah, because I do feel like it narrows down to like style and also size of production team, and then, you know whatever you like, you know whatever current economical factors that are going on right now. 
as you can see, bro, like, you know, COVID did hit, and there were a lot of productions um, on certain things. Um, but do you feel like you felt that, though, with some of these anime? Or, you know, like, do you feel like not, there's a anime with Demon in particular? Slayer. Just, yeah, like, Demon Slayer, like, they dropped a movie during COVID. Well, I feel like because, you know, with some things that they had these things already in the chamber already. So oh, I kind of felt, yeah. Mm. So I do kind of feel like, you know, some people already had some something already in the work. So it only requires some fine tuning here and there. But yeah, man, it's it's multiple factors. But I am liking, you know, like as Joey said, yeah, we had it before. But then I guess now it's more of a concrete thing. But I, and I, you know, I do look for it. Like, there's more announcements behind it. Like, we're just not gonna randomly show you reruns and not give you yeah, more explanation. Like, okay. Tell us nothing. Yeah, yeah. I can, okay. like, I can respect that. <laughs> like, like back in the day, it was like what a parent said, like, "Oh, you're on a need to know basis." Here's yeah. that here's that episode that you saw a while ago. <laughs> but then no, now they, get, but now they true. give you announcements. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so I it's guess, better uh, communication. Yeah, I guess my the, my last little mini question before we move on to the more specifics. Do you feel like it hurts the hype at all, right? So, like, for example, uh, Bleach has come back, and I don't think many people are talking about it the way I would think they would. You know, especially with the, the, the way they've actually gone in-depth more than they did in the first half. It does, it does weigh on momentum, I would say that. Because mm-hmm. momentum is a constant growing thing. Yes, you know, like, yeah, because you know, Mm -hmm. with this, like, especially when you have read the manga, everybody was really looking forward to the new Bankai's when people, when they was really striking back and then really wiping the floor with these Quincy's. Yeah, I do see, like, yeah, the momentum kind of, it kind of get hindered. I do feel, but yeah, then that also goes back to the point, like, all right, by the time it starts to really pick up. Like, I guess we're, especially, I, I think, because we've gotten so deep into this binge culture. Mm-hmm. Or not really binge culture, but, like, we're always so used to, like, knowing when the next episode is coming. Or something of that caliber that we know, all right, the next week is the next episode, or something of that um, particular method. Yeah, it kind of it, it kind of does weigh on the momentum. I mean, but, you know, it, it might shift up because, you know... I, when you really look at it, the, most of the fans, like, you know, we are dealing with adult life. So we have many things to occupy us. But... True. I, I guess because, you know, like what Dory's going to say is like Attack on Titan, right? Attack on Titan now has had so many breaks in between it. At one point, the break between season one and season two was literally years long. That it's, it's a series where, like, it didn't, you know, like, it by all definitions should be done by now. And hurt, you know, and, hurt, it, and it really hurt the momentum to, to yeah. Like, it hurt the momentum so much. I remember my older siblings who never watched anime a day in their life. They were telling me, hey, man, you guys watch Attack on Titan? Oh, man, this thing is amazing. NBA players. It was it was literally all over the news. Mm-hmm. You'll hear a, a, a basketball player, a football player. Yeah, man, I'm watching this thing. Hey, you'll see him on the sideline. Hey, you watch Attack on Titan? Yo, man, that thing crazy. And it was like, I'm like, it was really the Attack on Titan had so much so much momentum. It was really changing how these um, it was almost gonna change how the formula was gonna be for the next evolution of anime or mm-hmm. mangas to come out. But um, for whatever reason, they don't understand. They forget to understand that these people only attach to your property because it's moving motion, not because they got time to read a manga. Yeah. So you yeah, know, yeah. um, att- that really hurt the momentum to the point nobody really cared. And for those who were interested in the story, I had to read. I had to wind up reading. I, had, yeah, I wind you, up reading. What other choices you, know? you have? Yeah, you would still what be waiting I, yeah, for the an anime. Mm-hmm. Um, and like One Punch Man, season two took too long to come out. Killed the momentum. Nobody talks about One Punch Man anymore. At one all. Punch Man was all the rave. Nobody gives a. <laughs> nobody care at all. Yeah. Now, now, what else? What else is suffering from that? Um, There's another show I was going to mention that I think is having... Oh, uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Stone Ocean. Stone Ocean had uh, yeah. significant gaps between the parts of season six. Too, and by the time you got man. to the, the last end with Pucci, it's like, bro, I didn't see a soul talking about it. Talk about it, yeah. Um, I, And not to mention, it wasn't the strongest part of the JoJo's Bizarre It's a, it's a little more divisive than, than most than other yeah. seasons. But I think yeah. when that happens, because it's always been divisive, right? Ever since the original run everyone's like either you love part six or you hate it 
I'm like, this is mm-hmm. for something that's so fifty fifty. That's not the one you put on pause. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like you put season yeah. five on pause, where everyone loves Jorna. So no matter how long it takes for it to come out, it was like we love Jorna. We don't care what happens with Jorna as long as it yeah. comes out. Whereas season six is like Jolene had more of an uphill battle than all the other protagonists, and you give her the most breaks between shows. Where like I, I had me. to kind of rewatch. I'm like, what happened with Poochie again? I forgot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she wasn't an interesting. She wasn't as interesting as a protagonist as people would like her to be. I could. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I, it's because I actually disagree. I I, yeah. I think I think when we talk, we text about this once. I think with Jolene, the issue with that season is that she was the most interesting character in her group. She was more interesting than the than the other girls. She was more interesting than the dudes, um, other than maybe like. Uh, weather forecast weather forecast I, yeah. yeah i didn't care about the rest of the crew and then of course jotaro because it's jotaro um whereas season five i'm like bro bruno you know what i'm saying like trish uh uh what's it called buddy with the gun Daryl yeah, great fire. everyone was <laughs> fire yo mista. Every, uh, mista. yeah mista bro all the yeah, characters were fire serious. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's hard to kind of compare because it's like, you know, Jorno didn't have to be. I mean, granted, he was interesting, but he just wasn't as interesting as the rest of his crew. Whereas season six is like, Jolene is probably the most interesting of all the new characters introduced. To the point that, like, Jotro has to get involved again because no one else has anything cool going on <laughs> to, like, to fight Pucci. <laughs> they had and to bring I him think, back. I think the stand taking over the body of the um chick was was weak for me man. it was a little weird but it's it's it, it's it's, it just, it's jojo's bizarre adventure bro come on now come on yeah now. i know but it was just like this is this is, and then this is not gonna work man yeah <laughs> for me it was it wasn't gonna work but um yeah yeah I, I, for me i felt like i don't know man I, you're probably right because it's I, just like i don't know if yeah. she just I just, I guess, like to to keep it the topic and going. It's just like I think it, it it just depends on the property, right? It hasn't like Demon Slayer has kept a pretty healthy production schedule. Like by the time you're starting to like forget what happened, they announce another trailer for a new season. Uh, that Fate State Nine money, Fate State Nine <laughs> has not had a bad season. Even I can't get into it, mm-hmm. but the budget for that anime, Anytime and it's just clips. an anime. Yeah. There's no yeah. manga, <laughs> no manga. But it's 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 a release schedule, you know. My Hero Academia has yeah. a pretty healthy release schedule, also. You know, regardless oh, of the quality of the story, let's it not comes out pretty frequently. Numero uno, his name is Meliodas. That no, that's a different. That's a different. <laughs> that's that fell off. No, for it different had reasons. momentum. <laughs> yeah, that it fell off for lot. different reasons. Different. <laughs> there's a lot a more. Yeah, 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 it wasn't yeah, the yeah, release yeah. schedule that killed that show. It, oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, but yeah, all right. So yeah. you know, I guess that's the consensus is that it just depends on the series and, and depends on the gap, right? Because again, again, right now, Bleach, which we're about to get into, they're dropping episodes, and everything that I see kind of goes back to One Piece. Um, but yeah, so now we're on part two, right? You know, uh, we all talked about even before starting this podcast about how part one of the Bleach release schedule didn't clarify some of the things that we were hoping it would clarify. Uh, for example, uh, Unahana's uh, Bankai, where she starts the sword starts dripping blood. We still don't know what it does. We still have no like. Even after seeing, anime, I'm like, I don't know what this does. Is this an illusion? Is Kenpachi's skin really falling off, and she's just repairing it? What is happening? Didn't clarify it. Didn't clear it up. Nothing. And, and that's then, oh, what makes that, that. Sorry about that. That's what makes me scared. That you know. Yeah, you know, we waited 10 years for this, but now I just kind of feel like, well, are you just going to go panel for panel, just mm-hmm. animate it and no real clarity about a lot of the plot holes? Like, you're just, oh, we're just finally going to just give it to them so we could push more games, more product. Yeah. merchandise. But, but it's then, like, bro, you do realize we care about story, too. Right. But then, but then you look at season two, right? And I sent you guys a clip in the group chat. They actually showed Shinji's Bankai. Um, in the anime, whereas in the manga, you don't see it at all. It's in like a novel somewhere that was released after the series ended. So they saw mm-hmm. Shindy's Bankai. Uh, they explained how uh, dang, the buddy that had like the uh, the metal arms as his Bankai, the visor. They explain how his Bankai works and what it actually does. And then the buddy that had um, 
the Rose Shikai from the Visor, they explain how his Bankai worked. So we're starting to get little instances where they're actually going into depth about what these things actually do. And it's not, it's not off screened for once. Well, I think, well, them is because, you know, they're, they're head captains. And then to be honest, I have, I have a, a big preference towards the Visards. Ever mm-hmm. since we start, saw the little time skip thing with them and how they came to be, I was like, bro, that was prime bleach for me. Mm-hmm. Like, to see what actually happened to them. And then, you know, and that really impacted the end where, when, when um, Aizen was yelling at Kisuke. But that was Kisuke's payback, bro. For mm-hmm. what you did, for what you did to me, bro. Like, mm-hmm. like Kisuke had that stone cold face. Like, yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I caught you. Like, I, I, I beat you right in your own game. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, so yeah, I am looking forward to see like you know little things here and there. I just really, and, and we gotta say it out loud. Mm-hmm. I want to know what happened with Grimjow in that dome. I want oh. to know. I don't know the if fact that it, so, 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 the, so the fact that nobody just explained what happened to them, like bro, like it's like, come on, man, like. But I did realize, like, yeah, like you know, the final arc. That's where they were going bunkai crazy. So mm-hmm. I do, but then like how you just said, they dropped the ball with Unohana. Like it's like, yeah, you know, all these, you know, the, whatever captains that were left, and even some of their lieutenants. Everybody was just going bunkai crazy. Everybody was learning a new technique that passed down to their family until now. Like, everybody's showing all these clan tricks. Mm -hmm. But where's the actual explanation? Right. Right. And it it was weird, too, about season one is that they actually went through the the, the lens and efforts to actually show uh, the original 13. And that they were all, like, Stone Cold murderers. And who was in it? Unohana. <laughs> like she's she's been there for centuries and you're just like, Oh, so we're gonna get nope, no, nope, all right, okay, never mind. <laughs> like <laughs> you know, so I I don't know. Like I, I think it's been good so far. Like I'm glad that they actually it seems like they maybe heard some of the critique and have made more efforts to showcase like, okay, we know you guys want to see more fights on screen, uh, more bonkai's actually be explained um and given depth. But to your point, Tim, do do you feel like uh, like the aspects of the story that you want to see outside, of course, of the final arc uh, for where we're at now, where like Byakuya and Rukia and Renji make their return? Is there anything in these particular upcoming fights that you're like, I hope they explain blank? Um, yes, because, uh, for example, remember, remember, there were certain plot holes, like if your sword breaks, yeah, yeah. The Zambato spirit basically doesn't really care for you anymore. Mm-hmm. And then the fact that Renji, um, they said, like, oh, you never said my proper name. Because I yeah. remember with Yumi Chika, like, that was always the gimmick. But then I was like, but why Renji? What what was this about? Like, But then you realize, yeah, you know, oh, but you lost all of these battles. You made us look bad and all that other stuff like that. But then the thing about it is, so he just had your name wrong from the beginning or something right. like that. Right, and that's and what held back his like, bankai. Yeah, like which is like which is very dumb, so to speak. Because you look at like um a person like Ikaku Madarami, where he barely wins anything, but he still goes so ham in his battle spirit that you know his bankai is right there with him. Mm-hmm. So it's like there's a lot of plot holes on certain things that is just a plot armor, I would say. Well, I mean, uh, not to disappoint you, but they already showed Renji's fight in the anime, and they pretty much said the same thing. You weren't pronouncing his name properly. And yeah, he, he, I mean the transformation looked cool. Like I liked seeing the fight animated, but they they didn't really elaborate yeah. on why he was. But you, <laughs> but, you, but you know they did it for plot armor, bro. Because when you really look at it, like yeah, we've seen Renji's Bankai for years, and it's lost its appeal, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Like yes, like you know R- Rukia finally has her Bankai. She's the Snow White princess. Yeah. Um, but then the fact is, like, yeah, so like, oh yeah, but Renji's gonna come back with his original Bankai and magically beat this guy who took out two plus captains, right? No. Two visor captains at that. Yeah, yeah. and I was like, nah, there's like no well, three visor, two, 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 yeah, yeah. Right. No, nah, but the crazy part is, and I, and I, they gotta explain this correctly, is when Kenpachi fought that kid. Yeah, yeah. No, honestly, I'm, no, Kenpachi's. Part is the biggest plot hole, bro, because it's like, 
So was his girl, that girl, or was that his bankai all the time? Or was she connected to it? Or is she like a connected to his spirit or something? It's like... Which makes... So, and uh, 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 For anyone listening, spoiler alert. Uh, spoiler alert. If you want to fast forward maybe 10... No, let's say five minutes ahead. But go ahead, Tim. Go back here. I just want to you know, warn people. <laughs> no, nah, bro. I mean, they should have read the manga by now. <laughs> they they should have read the manga by now. The manga's been out for years, bro. But it's like... It, it's like that was the most confusing part, bro. So like, all right, so he finally summons his bond guy, which mm-hmm. it was okay. It was okay. Like it, it could have yeah. been better. It could have been better. Yeah. But then you know that's what you expect. Like you know he's a savage. Just give him something to just do whatever with it. They actually explained it pretty well. That it was his repressed power coming. You know, like his in repressed savagery, kind of like on full display. But go ahead. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. But I just kind of felt like all right with the the lieutenant aspect. So she just disappears. And not so to mention, she, not only could she possibly be part of his bankai, but she also had her own shikai. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah, because like, cause my thing about it is, so was it like something like similar to like Coyote Stark and Lily Nett? Or mm-hmm. like they're like pieces of the same soul or something like that? It's just like, come on, bro. You kind of just have to like explain it. it don't, we don't need a full episode to explain it. Just yeah. say it within five lines. Yeah, it could easily be something of like there was levels to his repressed consciousness, and she was one, and then her shikai was another level of repression, and now it's all yeah on on front street. But yeah, that for me, uh, Jory, I'm gonna let you get. I know you got stuff to say too about Kenpachi's fight, but the thing I want to explain is Mayori's fight with the was it the, the right hand of uh, the Soul King? Yes, bro. I yes. was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I beg no, your no, pardon. See, it's the so what the, of the what? <laughs> so the Soul King, like, all right. And and I and I oh and honestly, yes, that's a big plot hole as well. Like like, you know, when Aizen was yelling with Kisuke, Kisuke says, like, oh, so you saw it. And yeah. you know, and I like how he referred it as it. So he's like, Yeah, but what what makes you want to worship a thing like that? Like basically mm-hmm. What is actually the Soul King that that despised Aizen so much that he went on this path of self liberation? I mean, I guess that's what it is, yeah. like self liberation. Like you wanted to transcend above him. Like, what is it? The fact that one body part is here, one body part is there, or this Quincy has this part. Like, how? 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 So it could right. just like right. Why does Ukutake okay. or whatever his name is with the white hair? Why does he hold a part of the Soul King in him? You know, and, like and still sick and still sick, like, <laughs> like, like, bro. And then that Valkyrie Quincy dude had the heart. It's like, bro, come on. Every yeah. it's like now the people are just cheating now, bro. Like, mm-hmm. like it's like, come on. Yeah, that, those are just, I. Kenpachi's fight and Mayuri's fight with the, the right hand of the Quincy. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're not just going to blow past this <laughs> fact of, like, how does he have uh, – and why does he answer to, to uh, you know, Quincy Jesus? Why is he his subservant if he's the right hand of, of the Soul King? But, yeah. Jory, what's – I know Jory's complaints about Kampachi has has gone for years. This man has, has a deep-rooted <laughs> issue. I never – I never – I never forgot when I was reading the panels. I'm reading the pages, though, and I find out the kid's power is imagination. I said, "Okay, it's over." I'm like, "This the final, like this the final, this the final arc, man." The this end boss, is, yeah. It's over. <laughs> is the, I'm like, "Yo, homie, done, kid. Whatever dark thing happened." So now I'm going panel for panel, and I think he goes to cut, and then I find out Kimpachi cuts, buddy. I say, "Hold on, hold on, kid." So wait, no. time, out, time. Out. This is not real, dog. It's, it's him and the dude with the power of black. Mm-hmm. Where I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. That's it. I'm done. Cause uh, that fight right there made no sense. I still don't understand how he won. Well, remember with uh, uh, Buddy the Imagination, he couldn't imagine himself defeating Kabachi. He beats himself. Yeah. Now, (laughs) 
Now, now for context of the fight, this was after he put Kenpachi in the coldness of space and had a meteor fall from the sky. That Kenpachi see, I didn't, cut I didn't half. see, see. Now, I didn't want to bring that up because I still was in disbelief that that actually happened. Because I was, <laughs> oh my God. I thought yeah. I was tripping. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't that, imagine that, himself beating Kenpachi. And then, and then, um. I mean, I mean, well, I mean, well, Kenpachi has always been a cheat character, bro. Because when you really look at it, Kenpachi is like basically an adult kid boo. When you really look at it, he just always cut like kid boo. No matter what you did to him, he was always coming back for more punishment. Mm. And like it was just his demeanor that really just made you feel like, bro, am I even making a dent in this person? Mm-hmm. And you you saw a lot of that when Kenpachi fought Noritora. Like Noritora was. Ha, ha, hacking away, but then Kenpachi yeah, was just smiling, mm-hmm. smiling, going back and forth, back, and he's like, "Bro, am I? What am I doing to this person? He has no fear. He literally just jumps in the in the midst of me, just swinging to cut his head off." Yeah. But then you know, Kenpachi also had a moment of clarity, like, "Oh, yeah, I can't take this guy much longer. I, I can't, I'm I can't, to bleed I, out. I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah." So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna follow what old man Yamamoto said. Use both of my hands. Two strikes. Bam. Done. Which was really cool. I would I wanna say like for as many bad bleach retcons as they are, like, oh you never knew my true name. Like I think Kenpachi has had the best retcons of like, yeah, you know, to be fair, it's like it seemed like planning of like, yeah, he's always fought one handed. It's like what if I fought with two? I was like, Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, like, it, the the whole thing of, like, the whole he's repressed himself because he wasn't able to find a fair fight. Okay. Okay. I, I can get behind it. You know, I, I, I it, he's ha- he's always had a pretty good, like, on the Kampachi side, I feel like it's all made sense. But the Quincy's, bro, mm-hmm. they're, they're, I don't know. Their power is at a certain point was like, what is happening, yo? What is happening? Over the captains? <laughs> and, and, and you know what I say? One of the biggest plot holes, and and it goes back to like you know the biggest enemies that they fought. You know, which I consider it was the Frieza saga of Bleach, was the um, Vasta Lordes. Um, you know, I I really want to know like you know did Grim Jiao and the 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 Shark Hollow Lady did oh, they uh, ever ascend Harry, to that Hallibel. level? Hallibel. Well, it, it, it said ascend? that she didn't. She didn't. But Grim Jiao, we don't know. And that's the thing, like, so Grim Jiao comes back in this very cool fashion, mm-hmm. but it's like, so did he ever ascend? Yeah. And then you find out through a random Bleach game that uh, Ichigo's form that he fought uh, uh, Yukoria, or, yeah, Yukoria, is that the name? I can't I can never pronounce his name. Uki, Uki, Ukiora. Ukiora, yeah. right. His, that long-haired form that actually was a Vasto Lord Hollow that he manifested himself into. That's how he was able to beat him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do yeah, that. that's his vassal lord form. Let's do mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ichigo Mary it, Sue. A, Arasaki. Yeah. Yeah, bro. It, it, it's a lot, man. It really is, man. So, like, I just really hope, you know, to get back on topic, like, yes, like, I really hope they, did, they just start. It's a couple of plot holes. Just a couple. Okay. Yeah. Y'all just don't a have couple. a problem. Y'all don't have a problem with homie's power. It being black itself? No. 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 It no. makes sense? Did they explain? No, because, bro, when, it when, they introduce, when they introduce these Quincy's, I realized, all right, everybody's a cheat code. <laughs> Hammer away. Right, like the best cheat code <laughs> Cause bro, Yeah. Because, bro, when they got to those final four, like those final four head Quincy's, like the, one, the black dude, they could not beat this dude for nothing, and they brought him down to the point where Izuru won the fight. I was like, ah. I was like, bro, <laughs> what? Like, bro, I was like, what? <laughs> so you mean to tell me they just went through all of that, and he just defeats dude just like that? Basically, dude, dude who basically got almost one shot at, and like literally, like thirty percent of your body is gone. Yeah. And it's only yeah. put together by little tethers. Yeah. He's the one that takes yeah, it out. Like, you, like you're basically a zombie. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, to your answer your question, Jory, yeah, I could get behind to Tim's point, yeah, I could get behind let the best cheat code win. You're coming with a game genie and I counter with game shark. Now what? Oh my <laughs> god. <Man. laughs> I hit you with the down, down, up, B, A plus uh, start select combo. <laughs> now what? <laughs> yeah, because and pull out a Rayquaza. Rayquaza yeah. million. Because bro, when when those final four when they beat the Zero Squad, I was like, no, no. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I was like, That's no. The best G like, code win. That's homie, the best right G you, code win. Homie, right? You turns into Rayquaza. Oh my gosh, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that yeah. game shark was crazy, dog. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cheat, 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 cheat codes all the way, bro. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right, so, I mean, so we could we could move on. I just, I you know, Bleach obviously holds a near and dear place to all of our hearts. You know, it was one of the the uh, big anime during our time, getting into anime heavy and manga heavy. And again, mm-hmm. like I always will say, Kubo, if not for nothing, he, that man could draw, boy. That man can. His character designs, uh, even the concept of something so simple as a hollow mask as a power up, like he has some really, really, really cool ideas. So I'm hoping mm-hmm. that somehow they can like salvage this arc. I hope he's not like, no, nah, it's fine the way it is. Like, no, sir, please, <laughs> I beg of you, <laughs> please oh, change yeah, certain yeah, things yeah, yeah. and explain oh, more. Like, <laughs> That's all yeah, I ask. <laughs> all right, so we good. We good to move on. All right, let's get let's get into uh, the director's cut of. Uh, Last uh, pod, episode 11, the the OG cut. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll get started. We'll start off with uh, the thing that I was hoping to have the group discussion with. And, we, you know, I got Tim's perspective. I got Jory's perspective. But now we're all here in the same room to talk about it. We'll kick it off with the Mortal Kombat Evo trailer. You know, Jory finally got his wish fulfilled. Um, it was a, a dream that, you know, Tim and I, we didn't expect to have fulfilled of, like, what happens when you get the reptile that we all wanted? <laughs> you you know, got to like, do a compilation <laughs> of the conversations we was having and yeah. predictions, man. You, oh, that got to be a short. That got to yeah. be a short. No. The, the back and that forth between you oh, and Tim. Man. I'm like, Tim was like, no, he's a rep. Oh, he's a lizard. And you're like, no, but oh, I want a uh, Mortal Kombat human. movie human. one reptile. Yes, yes, man. We, <laughs> and Edwin like, was like, but what about both? <laughs> oh, no, nah, because of that, Ed, you got my pre-order, man. You got my pre-order. I'm going I'm to buy the most expensive version, bro. <laughs> I'm about the most expensive version, dog. Like, yo. Oh man, yeah. brothers, joke, talk yo. to me. The the trailer dropped. We got we got ourselves the reptile we did not know we wanted because it was everything. We got everything with reptile. Well, well please. All I can say is, for Injustice Three, Killer Croc and Beast Boy confirmed. Because I, 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 that was his original cause, point. Cause I, he was like, because because I look at I look at character models. Oh, a shapeshifter. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, a crocodile looking fighter. Beast, yeah, Boy, Beast Boy or or Killer Croc. Man, we don't from. know when that's coming out. The way DC. Yeah, is, I mean, boy. yeah. Hey, but it's confirmed. But then you know to get back to the trailer, I was like, bro, I've never seen reptile in this light. Like the fact that they even gave this dude an actual name, like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. size off. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, who's he talking to? Oh, he's talking to reptile. <laughs> so, the, so, the, so the dude's name is just not reptile. Yeah, We've just been just... calling him that. Mm-hmm. Bro, it, it brought so much life, man. And then the fact that you know, even his story, like you know, yes, you know, my people, we have shape shifting abilities, but I was considered a freak for you know taking on a human form. But then it's like, bro, like, you know, bro, power to these ninjas, man. They've, and you know, and I get it. In the beginning, it was always Scorpion and Sub Zero who had the mm. most depth in terms of story. But you could tell now they're really trying to like deepen the identity of these ninjas. Like, or Rain is the top mage of Outworld. Mm. Um, Smoke, um, yes, he's the half, he's the half sibling of Scorpion and Sub Zero, the supernatural twins. Mm-hmm. Um, size off the outcast of the Zaterans. You know, I was going to ask, uh, I saw something, I forgot what uh, I was watching. I think it might have been something Maximilian had said, where he was saying that, no, you know who it was? It was Kyle Bossman. I was watching what he said. Um, and I'll, I'll go into the main topic, the point that he made later. But do you guys feel like they're giving so much more attention to the ninjas this time around because they know that the ninjas are like essentially like the lifeblood of Mortal Kombat. 
You know, because like yes. uh, uh, one of the points that was made is that MK3 was the first uh, Mortal Kombat that launched technically with not really, other than Sub Zero, Scorpion wasn't in MK3 originally, and Cyrax and Sector were already r- robots. So it was the first like non ninja Mortal Kombat, and it didn't sell as well. Yeah, and ever uh, since then, Scorpion and Sub Zero have had have been in every single release. Yeah, yeah, you know, the ninjas are, I would say, like, the men and the female ninjas are some of the most iconic figures in the entire franchise, bro. Like, they hold so much weight. And, you know, yes, there are certain human characters that, you know, people beloved, and, you know, there are certain monster characters that people beloved, but, bro, the ninjas, man, is just, it's just so iconic, man. It's a golden ratio. Even, even like, with Mm -hmm. MK11, bro. I've seen so many tournament users like the way how they just destroy people with Noob, Cybot, and Jade. Mm-hmm. Bro, it's just like <laughs> it, it, it's you can't beat it. Yeah, you just can't you just can't beat it, man. And I just and I really love like you know, especially since from like I would say from MK nine and onward, the deeper story that they are really giving them to really mm-hmm. push the barriers that you know they're no longer just color swaps or. A character that we threw in just because you like the color back in the day like no there is an actual story to these characters and why they matter in this particular story even in terms of the human characters you know they released the bios for for raiden and stuff like that so like yes this is raiden that you want to take seriously now because mm-hmm. he is there to prove himself i'm no longer just a bystander and try to fix things at the very end no. right the reactionary I'm, god I'm, <laughs> I am at the forefront of this. Like, you know, and I realized, yes, like even Kung Lao's story, they haven't really revealed like his intentions or his particular demeanor because yes, this Kung Lao has to be different because Liu Kang is no longer his rival. Right. So who is this this new era of that is you know, Chronica new the new era. Yeah. Who is this who is this new era of Kung Lao? What is his demeanor? And, Maybe he's you know, he's being the champion character. Maybe he's the Liu Kang of this reboot, essentially. Like he's the the child and chosen one. Yeah, and yeah, that would actually be very very cool to see. And you know, even though technically Raiden is considered part of the Shaolin now or whatever, mm-hmm. but then you know, like even the expansion of like you know Kenshi being like you know he's a he's a yakuza who doesn't want to be part of the life anymore. Johnny Cage, an action movie star who wants to be taken seriously as an actual martial artist. And, you know, of course, like, yeah, you know, this time around, Katana is the younger sister. And, you know, she has undying loyalty to her older sister. But the older sister is impulsive. Right. Right. I mean, so, like, uh, there's, right, right. yeah, so there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting factors that I'm really looking forward to. But, man, yeah, that trailer, like, and apparently we're getting another one on the 22nd. Um, yeah, yeah, we're getting another trailer on the twenty second, bro. Yeah, bro, remember okay. it's September, bro. It's September, <laughs> Yo, bro. Like, okay, <laughs> they're road, dude. no they're complaints road. here. I was just like, wow, all right. Because they're, they're oh, yeah, this stuff out. There's, yeah, there's Gamescom, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Wow, okay. Um, and then you know, there's only there's only six slots left. Only six yeah. slots left, so this about to be the. Yeah, to Jory's to Jory's point, I don't care who they put in the game at this point. I'm good. Like, oh yeah, the rep, yeah, for real. The reptile like... reveal, <laughs> the fact that they confirmed havoc. I'm like, okay, none. <laughs> I'll see y'all on September 20th. I guess. Yeah, I need, there's nothing else I need yeah. to see. I mean, granted, I would love to, if some uh, staple villain characters came back, but at this point, I'm like, I I have seen what I needed. Um, still not entirely so with the cameo system, but I like you know after they did the combat cast for uh, Smoke and Li Mei and uh, who was the third person they showed. Um, Garrus, Garrus, and they show what you so what you could do with uh, you could have Sub Zero coach you to protect you from projectiles. Like there's a, it's it, it's it's not a gimmick. Like they thought it through about what these cameo characters can do, and I was like, you know, maybe maybe it'll, it'll win me over. But I'm like, in terms of the character rosters, in terms of you know the thought that they put in every single character audition, like. I don't know as much about Ashura as, you know, uh, compared to the other rosters of characters, but I was like, oh, she looks cool. You know, like, I remember her being that lady with the with the hat in, from the original run. That's all I remember about her. But I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm rolling. You know, like, I'm, I'm cool with seeing how this plays out with her. Yeah, she's basically, she's a, a demon slayer, demon slayer. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. She, she's a she's a she's a demon who wants to purify her soul, so she kills other demons to do so. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, um, havoc. Um, well, we finally got confirmation that the, the well the realm of order does exist in this new realm. So it looks like his his origin story is. The creation of probably chaos realm or something leading to it, I would say, mm. um, because apparently he's from the realm of order and he was punished for certain things of yeah. that nature. Hotar so. was in the game, though. No, yeah. I think so too. Ed Bo- no, Ed Boon said, Ed Boon said no. Ed Boon said no. He did. Yeah. Yeah, he did. They did a questionnaire, and then somebody asked for, uh, "Is Hotar in the game?" He said, "No, Taro." Really? Oh, wow. Because yeah. I feel like he would have made a really good uh, anti. I'll reimagine him, yeah. I'll yeah. Reimagine him. Or, or like maybe in, he, in maybe he might take order, it. Maybe you know? he might take it back. Because remember, look at what happened to whole Melina situation. You never know. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like she's not in eleven, and they put her as DLC. Um, well, yeah, because she was dead. Um, but yeah, like I, I feel like Hotaro, like in terms of like him holding up the the realm of order, like you know, again, people who have like the absolute justice stance, like they're the ones where it's like they can be misguided by like justice over logic and and feeling and compassion. And uh, based on like Havoc's bio, it seemed like he was upset about the way certain people are being treated in the realm of order, and that's why he's looking to tear it down. So I'm like, it would make sense for Hotaro to kind of be like, no, this is just the way it is deal with it type thing and that's what kind of leads and then to the you know what if what if hotaro fights like fujin a little bit you know what i'm saying because they they almost have the same they almost look similar in a lot of mm-hmm. ways what if he's fujin now but just an extreme version you know i don't think just there are fujin. any um i don't think there's any new gods for for oh, example okay. But I do feel like our theory about shang sun is true because when you really look at it the hourglass is not omnipresent because remember, I right, look for well, look what happened in aftermath. Yes, Shang Tsung came to that particular one because that's the one that they originated from. But then, mm. when you go back in time, you technically went to a different hourglass that Kronika was monitoring. But then, mm. you know, in that original time, Corona Kronika was already dead. So you could say like there's multiple hourglasses for different dimensions and different spot pockets of time. So it's the fact like yes, you know. When Liu Kang fought Shang Tsung at the end, he technically left his hourglass for that new timeline one. Right. And, he, and, shape and, the universe. and then shaped that universe. But then uh, technically, you know, on the other side of things, when Shang Tsung won, he technically cultivated that. So it created like, you know, you know, just like how they said, the multiverse, it creates so many branches to the point where you lose count. Mm-hmm. So I do feel like, you know, this Shang Tsung is an invader. Like Titan, Shang Tsung, or whatever you gotta call it, because like, bro, there's what, what, what do you mean that you neutralized all the enemies that you originally had, but you did not see one thing coming? It's because there was another Shang Tsung out there who defeated you. Yeah, a Shang Tsung that exists outside of that. Or again, you know, going to one of our other uh, earlier theories is that it's possible that Onaga exists outside outside of time and space as well. You know, yeah. we don't know how yeah. he factors into the story somebody somebody said something i i didn't want to i didn't want to go for this theory because i feel like it's too it's too sick but they were saying that Liu kang is related to omaga because of the dragons because uh drag because of the dragon that Liu kang could uh, tra- uh transform into mm. he's a descendant also of omaga that's too I mean, far-fetched yeah that's, that's too far-fetched far-fetched. but it, it's kind of it... sick because it's always been there since they're doing that, you know, because, the dragon because, symbol. Because you got to count reptile and you also got to c- consider the fact of Goro. Because you yeah, remember with yeah, the Shokans, oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. there are there's certain, yeah, there's certain Shokans who have dragon lineage and that's what they're that's able true. to do fireballs. And there's some who are tigers. That's true. That's true. Right, so yeah. it's kind of like, that's that's too, yeah, that's a little bit too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I accept that. That's okay. real. Yeah. yeah. That's a good count. But, I, but good I love it. But I love it. Mortal Kombat, I'm, I'm for it. Yeah. Yep. All right. They got me. Pre orders yeah. ordered. But uh, yeah, I was I was I was all for it, man. That's the trailer of the year, man. That trailer was actually very good too. Yeah. Very good. Very Again, good it reminds trailer. you that um Nether Realm is they're not, they're not afraid to make a cinematic story mode, like for real. Let me ask you guys a question. Um how do you guys think the campaign's gonna play out? 
You think we're gonna get a surprise like a, a, a like a twist? A Shaolin monks inside? Nah, no. I don't think I'm dreaming. Not, I don't think I don't, yeah, I don't think you're gonna get any gameplay shakeups. It's just gonna be story related. They're not gonna do anything okay. of like. And here's a you know like we here's combat carts. You know like it, you're okay, not gonna yeah, get yeah. any of that in the game. Okay. Yeah, there's there's certain <laughs> classic things that I just realized that they're they're not returning because yeah. Just of how certain things are structured now these days, yeah, you know, you would like certain things, you know, you know, for example, with Tekken, I would love tag combat. For Tekken Eight, <laughs> it's just, oh, nah, it's, just yeah. it's just certain things that uh, paywall, they, 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 yeah, pay, paywall, paywall, ultra, or yeah, ultra you know, paywall. But you know, we couldn't do it yet, but it's gonna come five patches later. Right. Yeah. As we're as we're wrapping up the game, <laughs> we're no longer putting on new yeah. content. Here's one last yeah. push for Tekken 8 Ultimate Edition. Um, and then but that's I mean, we give it like how, many, how much more longevity now? Yeah, of course. Of course. Ha- not, Harada. A twist, not a problem. Harada. Yep. He's Harada like, Project Hell, you said, huh? <laughs> tag, yeah, tag team what? Okay. <laughs> All right, I got the tag team. <laughs> well, we, we can segue from this straight into Tekken 8. Yeah, when we were recording, you know, um, uh, the last pod and, um, you know, again, redoing this pod, we didn't get to actually react um, in a recorded format to Raven and, you know, Ultra Instinct Brazil um, being released as a characters. Peru, Peru, Peru. Peru, Peru sorry, Peru. Ultra yeah, Instinct yeah, Peru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah the I'm sorry. Stone at you, <laughs> right, Peruvians, I apologize. You know, Ultra Instinct Peru being released. Um, and, and, you know, with Raven, you know, we, we see that Namco Bandai is, is leading heavily on you know, we own Naruto, and we are going to borrow heavily from it. So uh, we're bringing back Alaris with Chidori, and Raven, you are basically Black Naruto. Um, how are you guys feeling? Like, how are you guys feeling about the reveal, the, the stage reveal, the uh, the parry mechanic that the, the Peruvian fighter has? It's so sick, because... Go ahead, Tim. All right, now I'm go. <laughs> I want y'all to keep this same energy when it comes to stages... For y'all anime fighters. Because, bro, like, these stages are are absolutely beautiful, bro. Like, mm-hmm. beautiful, dynamic. And it's like, I don't want to see daylight. I don't want to see nighttime. I don't want to see at dawn. I don't want to see on horizon. Just give me a version of the stage and give me something new for the next one. It's just like, come on, man. Like, you That's have so something- crazy. <laughs> that gimmick that yeah, they had, the same, that, that phase time. and era yeah, of games where it's like, it's a separate stage, but it's the same stage, but with different faders and filters. And here's a star backdrop. <laughs> and there's only eight of them. Man, man. <laughs> that's so cr- No, that's not. That's, yeah, that's that was one of the worst game. era of uh, fighting game trends ever. Like, we're going to give you the same stage four different ways. Jeez. Oh, city they, they backdrop, brought it back for city fighters. destroyed. <laughs> and they brought, they brought it back, back for, for Fighter Z. They brought it back for Fighter uh, Z. Yeah. Yeah, but even fighters like fighters too. You y'all have better not, you know. You get a bit of a pass because it came out twenty eighteen, but we're in twenty twenty three now. Like it's 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 unacceptable even, at this even, point. Even with Soul Calibur, the last Soul Calibur, I, they was doing it a little bit. I was like, bro, no, you ain't about to do this. So yeah, that's true. So Soul Calibur has been known to have some of the most best design stages in life. Like that medieval mm-hmm. era is like, bro, do mm-hmm. not play around. Do not mm-hmm. play around. You better design a quick quicksand trap looking desert or island paradise ring or something like that. Get to work. Let I don't want to see those. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, no I'm sorry. Tim. Go keep going, keep going. I no, no, no. I was, I was basically saying I don't want to see no sunset. I don't want to see no nighttime. All right. I want yeah. to stay. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm going to go on engine. to my, my, um, my. It's so crazy, right? To go back to Tekken, that noob cybot. Oh, I mean. <laughs> Raven, Raven, noob sidebot slash Naruto. It's just so sick because they they both black. Like it's mm. so sick. Like I don't understand. I, I'm seeing the uh, I'm seeing a lot of the characters in fighting games kind of like now converge or like yeah. remind you of another character. I don't know if it's if it's just creativity or, or what. If it's just a lack or it's it's the, find uh, it's, new. it's the prime Marvel prime DC effect where it's like. Okay, you made the Flash. That's dope. We're gonna make Quicksilver. Oh, 
okay, you made, you know, uh, Batman. Well, we're going to make, uh, what was the Marvel version of Batman? Um, the Punisher. You know, like, okay, our Batman kills people. You know, like, yeah. that, that kind of thing, you know? And, we're yeah, gonna, yeah. and because he's not a detective, we'll do Daredevil. How about that? You know, I think we're seeing that version in, in fighting games of, like, okay. that's a really cool okay. idea. I think I'm going to borrow it and make my and, own and, version. And with Namco, Namco Bandai, I actually don't have a problem with it. Um, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense. They all, they do make a lot of these. Um, they do. And, you know, they to own, be fair. They own all the anime properties. I don't think nobody got uh, better finishes than Naruto in anything. Um, in any game. I don't, at least I can't think of any. Like, Naruto has some of the best finishes I've seen in any game. Period. Mm-hmm. Even the team specials is perfect. Um, amazing, amazing spectacles. Yeah. Um, but like, I felt like that trailer for me was icing on the cake. I was I wanted Raven to make a return, and then like Raven is also inspired by one of um. You can tell he borrows heavily from Blade. Um, yeah. So, I think I think man, I, I'm his combat looks crazy. Um, mm-hmm. I'm I think he's gonna he might be a challenge to use, but um, I guess once you get the ball rolling. It's gonna be amazing, and then my the next character I'm waiting for is Fenway. But um, every all the characters I care for, oh, and Yoshimitsu, all the characters I care for, man, they're there, man. Um, I think Tekken, Tekken, Tekken right now is not going to uh, not gonna make a dent in um, Mortal Kombat. Uh, cause I don't I, think so I'm, either. I'm blown away at the short time. It felt like Mortal Kombat's been out forever. Mm-hmm. The trailers, the whole lineup's been out forever. And then Tekken, it was Tekken like a like, couple of months ago. Everybody was talking mm-hmm. about Tekken. After that, the first Mortal Kombat trailer came in. Everybody was quiet. Then they showed the, these trailers. Man, it's it, it's got too much energy in, in it, man. And, um, yeah. Yeah. But I think, you know, you know, Tekken, is still, Tekken still carries that very hardcore arcade type of feeling, bro. Like, te- like... I gotta say, like from Tekken Four days, bro, like it just it still holds that genuine yeah. spirit. Like, yes, you know Tekken started to take its story a little bit more seriously, especially with Tekken Seven. Like, cause, bro, like, like when that Hey Hachi fight with Kazuya at the end, where he was hallucinating when he saw his father as young and the abuse that he saw, I was like, damn, bro. Especially when Tekken Bloodlines came out, I was like, hey, hey no Clark Kazuya slander over here, bro. He was a victim. I don't want to hear none of that. <laughs> oh, boy, oh boy, he was a victim. Like it's just like you felt you felt sorry for him. Like he's mm-hmm. like, bro, like damn, my, my mother truly didn't love me. My father really hated me because of I was an extension of my mother. It was like, bro, I was doomed from the start. All mm-hmm. I have is hatred. Now the relationship between him and his son, they got to little do a little better than that. Because yeah. it's like, so why him and Jin? I get it. It was some type of brainwashing type of thing, but I like, bro, it doesn't really stick. So hopefully, and it's, it's also the whole like sins of the father thing, right? Where yeah. it's like the the family trauma gets passed down <laughs> yeah. a little. Uh, I mean, yeah. they, I, he, Kazuya did try to kill. He did try to kill Jin. So I mean, yeah. at that point, <laughs> but then, it, but then that's what I said. The reasons wasn't really strong. Like yes, like Hey Archie versus like Kazuya. Yeah, it, it made perfect sense. But then that's where, like, and then that's why I kind of feel like that's where Tekken Bloodlines was kind of hinted at. Like, you know, Jin wanted to meet his father. He wanted to know about him. Mm -hmm. So I do feel like, you know, this is going to really explore more of, like, all right, yeah, yeah, you know, Tekken 4, we kind of stumbled on their relationship. So let's get a little deeper into it. Yeah. Yeah. And I I guess, like, you know, uh, when it comes to Tekken, it's like, I feel like the... I still don't feel, like, the hype, you know, in terms of, like, it doesn't feel, I mean, granted, it doesn't have a release date yet, right? So there's also that part. But, like, it just doesn't feel, like, to Jory's point of, like, I don't feel, like, for as cool as Tekken is and as cool as it's looking, and I think out of the big three, right, of Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, Tekken's probably, outside of Street Fighter Six, because Street Fighter Six looks amazing, like, it's probably the most fluid-looking fighter, right? Like, the animation is just, like, when you get hit in Tekken, you're like, Lord have mercy, that you could feel it. You know, so like I think the, the the essentials of what makes Tekken Tekken is still there. You can still see it, but in terms of like I'm rushing out to go buy it the way I would feel about Mortal Kombat, I haven't even with these new trailers if, and even with Raven. Like I don't feel that like yo. if they add, if they add tag, 
to Tim's point, it's 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 over. It's literally mm-hmm. a Yu-Gi-Oh card away. Like I'm going to summon <laughs> the blue eyes white dragon. It's, mm. it's it's nostalgia, bro. To yeah. This, to this to this day, and I will say this for Tekken Tag Tournament Two, I had so much fun Dog, playing that bro. game, bro. I, we didn't even know it was coming out. We thought it was just like, and I saw the trailer. I said, Nah, man. Because when you and this is why I feel like they shouldn't shift. They shouldn't shift it like make it two separate games because when you played Tekken Tag Tournament Two and you went back to six, it was like night and day. Mm-hmm. It was like night and day, bro. And that's why I kind of feel like in this day and time now, like, you know, to keep, you know, these games together, just make it a combat mode, bro. That's all you have to do. That is all you have to do. Just make it a mode, kid. Mm-hmm. But you call do it you guys feel you... like, do you, I mean, like, do you guys feel like the, the it, they made it a mode, but they didn't put in enough sources, like resource into it to make it like a online viable mode? Would you still care as long as it's there? No, it's oh. not going to be good. It has to be online. It has to be online. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah it has to be online. I oh, mean, you know, it's... I mean, I mean, tech. I mean, they, 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 they do have rollback netcode because at the end of Tekken Seven's life cycle, they did implement it. So mm. this game is already being built from the ground up with rollback netcode. So, yeah, they have to take it that serious. Like you, you can't have a fighting game without because the purpose of fighting game is community. We can't mm. go. I can't go over your house anymore. Eh? You know what I'm saying? To play Tekken. Yeah. I can't bring mm-hmm. my PlayStation or my Xbox to introduce you to that experience. Online is it. If it is not good, that's a, it's a, I'm dropping you like a bad phone. I'm dropping you like a I'm dropping you like bad service or whatever. Because you're providing mm-hmm. a service. The focus of a, versus Capcom. Exactly, 3. exactly. Like if the online is not good, it's going like we don't care how big your name is. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. It's. I mean, think about it. It's the vital point. Like a fighting game is difficult because everything matters. How it looks, who the characters are. People will learn a character be just because they look cool, and that's not even a fighting style. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I hate charge characters. You know, Gal's a charge character. Oh, for real? Hey, two, three, what? Three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. Who's who playing with Gal now? The person who said they hate charge characters. Yeah, because they like Gal's aesthetic so much. So you cannot, that's non-negotiable. That is just as much a part of the game as the game is, you know. <laughs> you just can't do it. It's impossible, especially today's day and age. No, no, no. 2011, okay. you could I'm, probably get away with it, but now? No, nah, man, no. I guess the reason why I ask is because, you know, like uh, a lot of these uh, fighting game developers, they'll come out and they'll say how uh, much playtesting nowadays that they have to go through to make sure that these characters are as balanced as possible before they release them, right? You don't want the character that drops day one that's unstoppable. And I, I would imagine that becomes a little bit harder if you have to do that both for a tag format and a one-on-one format. Okay. That's why I asked. Now, no, okay. Now, with that, that's true. And the second thing is I think they don't want people to um, gravitate towards one side of the game. You know what I'm saying? They want it to be like, yo, this is the single player experience. If we put this in the game, for example, uh, I'm going to use Halo, for example. Halo has many modes, but if they were to put a Warzone in there, I'm pretty sure you'll never find anybody on um, a versus Slayer mode. That's the versus mode in Halo because big team big team battles are the thing. Not big team battles, but um, uh, battle arenas are the thing. Uh, Warzones mm-hmm. are the thing now. So, I think they want to make sure that the audience um, is focused on one. It, they, it's too much. It's too much left up to chance for them to like put all this effort into the single player. And after that, they find out nobody's playing the single player experience and playing just Tekken, They're just playing you know Tekken tag. They just want tag mm-hmm. one. Now nobody's playing singles. You know what I'm saying? So if for yeah. the developers, they really want. I think they they do not want you to have that liberty because they don't. They, they know that the game itself will never be because now I'm like, oh man, you taking out tag? Oh, this game's not complete anymore. So I think that's why they separate the two, and we'll mm. probably never see it come. And Dead or Alive, they did it, but this one, Dead or Alive, I think nobody really cares. <laughs> I mean, Dead or Which Alive is weird. sabotages itself. No, it's not mm-hmm. weird. It's it's it sabotages itself when you have a dope character like Ryu Hayabusa and you keep selling me uh, Beachwear DLC for six costume packs straight. Yeah, that's yeah. that 
It's not weird. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> well, now, in, in that sense, right? Um, yeah, I think they just don't want. You keep to, trying um, to turn into dead or alive volleyball in a, in a fighting game. But sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and nobody, nobody has a unique body shape at all in that game. That's the crazy no. thing. Only the males. Do. No. Yeah, everyone's built like a one piece character. One very, piece woman very, character. Very, very lazy design. <laughs> Very lazy All right, but I mean anyway. that's but that's why that's why I asked. Yeah, I'm just like I think that's maybe mm-hmm. the predicament uh, Namco is having of like if we do bring in tag team combat into Tekken Eight, like you said, you run the risk of people gravitating towards that, abandoning one versus one, and or it's not you know play tested enough. So now you play tag team, and you know while Jin might have been balanced one on one, tagging team him out with you know I don't know. Yoshimitsu, you guys are unstoppable, and we just haven't been able to, you know, play test it enough to to make it fair. Yeah, and all we get is mirror Raven. matches online. Yeah, Ra- Raven teamed up with um, Dragonov. Good luck, <laughs> or Finway. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. right. You were just like, I, you know, like I, I do just think about those things. Like I think yeah. Tim's right in the sense that, like they do need something groundbreaking to really get the hype back up. But I'm also like, I don't know if it'll be as extensive as tag because the tag is just like you're putting it. You, you know what I'm saying? You're putting a pretty high bar on anything Tekken related moving forward at that point. Everything has to have tag in it moving forward. Tekken 9 cannot yeah. not have tag. And do not sell us Tekken bowling again. That was that was blasting me, bro. <laughs> yeah, I it's know. Like, Those game like, modes bro, are so fun. I was like, bro, how 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 is a PS2 staple for free? But we paying fifteen dollars for Tekken Bo- mm-hmm. Get out, get out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I want them to bring back Tekken Force. I feel like that'll help. Um, I think so. I enjoy. I love Tekken Force. No, man. I think so. I think it'll help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They're not bringing that back, bro. Yeah, but I, I mean, it it helped, man. It was it was so no. enjoyable, man. Like you no. could play two, to have two a beat 'em up in a Tekken game. Yeah, yeah that's no. it's fun. Make it's, it broken. It's, I don't it's, care. It's it's, it's 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 fun, yeah, but no, nah, it's not coming back. Okay, that that's not coming back because the cinematic story, to an extent, has already taken over. So it's kind of like that. Yeah, because I get it. Because that's the I think the last time they had that was Tekken Six. Because yeah. that was how they told. Yeah. That was how they told the story, and you they realized it didn't stick because. Yeah, like, you know, you gave us the story about Lars. He's one of Heihachi's many children out there in the world. Okay, and he loves a robot. Okay. Yeah, that, that, no, that was here's, bad. That's their fault. Here's, Who told you to that? Here's, yeah, yeah. Here's, a, here's a giant robot piloted by Anna. Fight that. And, and that's why the story didn't stick. So that's why with Tekken 7, they took a different approach. Yeah, you were uh, this Interpol type of interviewer, you know, interviewing the Mishima Zaibatsu and their family history about why they're destroying the world. Mm. Like, yeah, that part was a little overstretched, but like, yes, you know, okay, let's go back to why the reason why Heihachi is so angry. I found out my wife was from a rival clan. She married me and tried to kill me. She never loved me. And as a, a fail safe proof, even though it was just for it was just for Brandon reasons, oh yes, yeah, she sent this assassin to kill me if she failed. Yep. And now the Tekken universe and Street Fighter universe are one. <laughs> <laughs> Which we'll probably never address again. You know, like, oh, so what does this mean? You mean Nothing? to tell me? You mean to tell me Bison never decided to team up with Kazuya? Right. No, That's why I'm like, no. that, there's... They, 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 and then Geese Howard also in this universe? Yeah. yeah, no, they got they got to just basically say, like, Akuma oh, came from man. a different dimension or something. Yeah, there's they, no have way they, can, they have to. Yeah. They have to, man. Because if Geese Howard finds out Kazuya exists, yo, Geese Howard is pure 80s scumbag. Like, well-written trash bag. I mean, the like, he's he's dirtier then the gentleman in RoboCop 2, after making the deal, dips his finger in the gentleman's wine. Let's quit the ch- Yo. <laughs> no, no. To be honest, when that Geese Howard trailer dropped, look at those comments till this day. That that trailer blew up. 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Blew up Tekken 7, bro. Yeah, that's true. that's true. Like, fans were like, wow. Yeah. Like, that is... You got to get in. And that's what I said. Like, wow. So, me to burn characters in Tekken actually does work. Yeah. Right. Actually does work. Really well, and actually. It's, yeah. And it's, not, and it's not, with, not, not just with Street Fighter characters. Like, no. Here's a Fatal Fury character. Mm-hmm. And... When you look at a Geese Howard, especially in that Phoenix outfit, is one of the top players like people use in tournaments. Geese and Howard. and the thing is with Harada, but Harada all already knew. And he, there was a I gotta find the interview, man. He was like, "Oh yeah, I know exactly what I would do for a Street Fighter character and how I would do it." He said, "Um, it, it wouldn't take, it wouldn't be too tricky. Only with certain things, but I, I pretty much understand how it would go because all you have to do is introduce the third straight thing. I was like, wait, what? So yeah, combos could be the exact same, and I'll just en- introduce that next element, and then boom. A- A- Akuma? I mean, to be honest with you, that was Namco, Namco, Namco Bandai's best guess from Tekken to Soul Calibur. I still don't understand why Soul Calibur... See, they shot themselves in the foot with the net code. You had Geralt of Rivia in your game. And it was mm-hmm. perfect, seamless. You had they could have given they could have given him more magic. Yeah, they could have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could have. They could have given him more magic. Seamless, man. And his fighting style worked, and it was good. He wasn't trash. Then mm-hmm. you had, then you had um two two B, two B. Yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. I've bro. I've seen I've seen her murder people, like in less than ten seconds. <laughs> Two B, then um, oh I forgot his name, not uh, Homaru, but yeah, right Homaru, mm-hmm. yo, you that's prayer, and then let's not even go to Super Smash Brothers, Cloud, 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 Super Smash got Brothers cloud? is is an indigo child, bro. It's, it's a yeah, it's a. <laughs> When you play when you play Ultimate and you realize that Kazuya plays almost exactly the way he plays in Tekken. And you're just like, and who's he fighting? I'm doing this. Well, <laughs> who's he fighting? Jesus. Ryu and Ken. Yeah, yeah. Fighting Ryu nah, and Ken. Come on, man. Dog, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, how did they do this? How do they do this? And it make it feel like the character. You play Sephiroth, it feel, you feel like you're in Final Fantasy. It's like, he just, you know what I'm saying? Like Super Smash Brothers don't count. They don't count. It's, yeah, it's no, but it's Bakurai just like is, that is a run, different level of genius. Bandai, yeah. Bandai Namco, if they had net code, that's what killed all their games across the line. Super Smash Brothers mm-hmm. dead. You mean to tell me I can't play online with my friends accurately? Dead. All that effort because it does not commute on the level of simple. Um, communicate not not sit not, because it doesn't work on the basis of it, the purpose of you making it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's community. You need a connection, a good one. You know, I'm not gonna yeah. do a 28 hit combo, and then after that, next thing you know, I'm flatlined. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm fighting in the past. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. Nah, I, I, only, it only worked on my end. On the other end, I've been. Only, yeah. <laughs> Homie just Suplex, dodges. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Five, so, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. And I, I guess that's actually a really good segue into the, the next part you know, of the big three of community. Street Fighter Six. right? We got two big uh, announcements at EVO. We got the Aki teaser trailer, um, as well as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle crossover. Um, let's, talk, let's talk about the Turtle crossover first, right? It's cheap. It's cheap. Well, uh, it, it actually, is, it's, it is, not, it, it's no, fifteen dollars it a skin. <laughs> That's not so, cheap. No, yeah. no, but you, but you, but you know what I mean. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's just skins for that hub world, and then this is what scares me. So now I foresee all right character skins, and now hub world skins, mm-hmm. and it's like here it goes. Yeah, like like but, Kel, like Kel said, oh here it goes. Yeah. <laughs> ah, here you go. <laughs> oh my god. But, but then the thing is like, is it are we surprised given Capcom's run nope. since no. right? You know? I it's remember just... I remember texting Tim, uh uh what's it called? I waited. I waited intentionally 
Street Fighter 4 drops. Super Street Fighter. Street Fighter Arcade Audition, right? They announce Ultra. Jeez. I text him. Tell him I'm about to cop. This is with everything. All the costumes, all the characters, everybody. I buy it and I... God as my witness. The very next thing <laughs> Capcom announced is a character Arcade. deal. Not sorry. A, a character costume DLC pack for Ultra Street Fighter 4. Right? The game that supposedly had the last DLC. And it's like dot, oh, dot, dot up man. until this point. I think I text him in all caps. I'm like, do you see this? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yo, my, you know, hey, man, that thing is crazy. Dog. Capcom and Street Fighter and their costumes, boy. It It is, it's, and the thing is, like, they, they know because people pay, right? People pay. Just, Street Fighter just, 5, you got man. Osprey as a costume. You got uh, Mega Man costumes. So, sorry, Tim. But to, be real, just, to be real with you, that Street Fighter 4 costume pack, they was them costumes was a one. They, yeah, they, they were. were them costumes but, was a one. Ryu in the they, samurai gi. But oh, my thing man. is, my thing is, it, it's to me, it screams. Yeah, I don't know I if know. it's a mixture of entitlement or disconnect. I'm like, bro, you just you literally advertise Ultra Street Fighter Four as like this is everything. This oh, is no, the compilation they, of all four games. <laughs> They, Without the costume DLC. That's Ono Rain, man. That's that Ono Rain, man. So yeah, things might be now, different now. Because especially nope, since they do, because especially <laughs> since they do tournaments now, they have Red Bull outfits. Oh, holidays. Oh, here's a breast cancer. Uh, yeah, for charity. Mm-hmm. Here's their outfits. Oh, here's you know the Capcom top um pool if you support it. You know, here's that and stuff like that. Like they have cool ways to make it work. But I just kind of hope that you know, with Street Fighter Six, they don't go the devil, um, the dead or alive route, where it's just costumes for every little thing. <laughs> no, it's not. like, bro, come they on, not. bro. They, like, even though they saw somebody, somebody spent ten k on um, dead or alive costumes, uh, but no, bro, I, I lost, I lost. I remember one time I logged on a PlayStation Store and saw like I just, I kept scrolling. I was like, bro, how many? costumes are there like i was scrolling for like at least almost two minutes bro man mm-hmm. them boys working like, the bikini pack the lingerie pack the christmas snuggle up pack it just of this like this you, is a fighting you know, game be, right you know or... be crazy <laughs> if the fight game now sell body wait you didn't like chun Li's thighs in the first one? Oh, we got xl chun Li this time you just <laughs> <laughs> you just you just bought a button then a lot gonna show you the breast size baby wait 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 e E? No, we got size X. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, dog, With its own dedicated jiggle physics. Oh. <laughs> and you got to pay for that pack? Dog, they going to do it, man. They going to do it, kid. They going to do it. Yo, them boys over there at Team Ninja? Oh, they don't care, That's man. a different kind of horny, bro. That's Yo, a different they, kind of because horny. Because not there, because Itagaki not there, them boys were like, that's their scapegoat. Oh, well, we, we had no idea this was going to be a problem for right. us. Right. <laughs> were they not crafting the most technically savvy guiding games you've ever played in your life? They just, yeah, the man, horny just boy. takes over. <laughs> they uh, just uh, get to and work. They, and then, like, they, they, they're like, oh, man, them boys is angry. Oh, man, we can't drop Beach Ball Tournament Volume 5. Right, <laughs> but I will say this: Aki is definitely Fong and Vega put together. Yeah. Put a little bit of jury on top, a little bit of jury, a little bit, yeah. little bit of that uh... more jury on top, man. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I could tell, I could tell she's gonna have a near, I would say near Halloween release. I could definitely tell. Mm. You think they'll so wait that long? Because yeah. right, when you look Will at the being roadmap, out now. No, when you look at the roadmap, they did say fall. And, you know, October is fall-ish when mm-hmm. you really look at it. And, you know, September... Uh, I'm not I'd say September. Yeah. I'd say September. So September or early October, I would say. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or, or early October. Here's what they're going to uh, do. They're going to drop her September, and October we get Halloween costumes. Mm. True. Yeah. 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 Oh, wait, yeah. my Aki look a little plain. Oh, she look a little plain, too, because all these other characters got costumes. I got to cop something for them. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. And then, and then I, and I would expect, ludicrous. like, and I, and I expect, like, by the time Akuma releases, oh, here's um character part two. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He'll he'll drop and on his release deals uh trailer there'll be the teasers for character pack two, one thousand percent. One thousand percent. Um, do you guys feel like with the um the Ninja Turtle skins, especially that they dropped an illustration of a character select screen with the turtles and all that and the bandanas, do you feel like it was a mix a missed opportunity to to actually put the turtles in the game? Would you have preferred that? If this collaboration was inevitable? In, in, well, inevitable. Right, well, uh, yes and no. Like, because like, first of all, all right, when Injustice 2 dropped that Ninja Turtle trailer, to this day, that has been one of the best character DLCs to me. Like, bro, the way that they played, and, you know, of course, like, you know, Ninja Turtle has done a lot of crossovers with Batman in the past. Mm-hmm. The, only, the only misstep that Injustice did with that was, like, you didn't give a shredder. Because I want to see Shredder versus Batman, just like mm-hmm. how you did us in that DC movie. It was Which like was actually pretty good. It was the, pretty good. Bro the, bro, the Turtles fit that universe so mm-hmm. well, bro. Like, I've seen people, with all four Turtles, like, literally demolish people. Donatello, oh, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you think I'm not a Zona? Stab with the stick. Get over here. Michelangelo slides under through your legs and just does does like a ten to fifteen nunchuck, nunchuck hit on you. Not to and mention they probably strong as <laughs> probably strong as yeah. what the yeah hey <laughs> ko mm-hmm. bro like that was one that is still one of the best character DLCs like till this day and you know. Like, which is, I get which is it. why it was I like asked, a, like, wouldn't it have been better to have like actual Leonardo or Raphael in a Street Fighter universe? No, no. Yeah, no. you want four slots? It's, 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 nah, it's too, it's too weird. It's too weird. I mean, I would, me. I would, I would, I would, I would have um, been okay with it, but it's like, it's just gonna be weird. Like four slots on your Street Fighter roster, and not everybody out. No, no, no. no? I, I get it. I, I get it. For you, the got you got Blanca. You got Blanca in the right, world. Right, hey. You do. Hey, hey. You do. No, I, I, I get it. It's for yeah. the gimmick of the costumes and the hub world, but as characters, no, no. I, I and would, that's a, I, and, that, and that's a hill I will defend on. Because okay. the thing is, you I, could you could make um Donatello fight like Relento, right? You already got him. Yeah. Then you got um, what's his name um. Leonardo would be a little bit tricky because I don't think obviously there's not a lot of weapons combat in Street Fighter, like yeah. literal weapons combat. But I think in terms of like a gameplay mechanic, where it's, it's kind of I don't know, I don't know like how it would be implemented for four different turtles. But it yeah. just seemed to me like them just being skins just seemed like a waste. Like, I'm like there could have been a little bit more here somehow. I think making a character would have been I too think much. They, I think they did it because of the movie. I think it was like. Like, in a way, like, kind of, like, I don't know, maybe Ninja Turtles is having, like, an anniversary or something like that. Because I have been seeing there's a lot of, like, coverage about them. Look, we got the last running game coming out. There's there's a new oh, yeah, comic crossover. Mm. A new a new comic crossover. Um, Even with, the, you know, the new DLC for the um, Shredder's, Shredder's Revenge, there has been a One lot of... One of the best beat-em-up games of the past year. Sorry, go ahead, Tim. Yeah. What, there's there's been a lot of Ninja Turtle like hype and media, so I guess like yes, as skins for a hub world, it makes sense to me. As mm-hmm. characters in this universe, no. Now, would I love to see them again in Injustice Three? By all means, by all okay. means, because they have multiple crossovers with Batman already. Where yes, they fit in the DC universe. They could actually fit as crossover characters, crossover guest characters. They make actual sense. The way they play makes actual sense. I mean, the way things are going, we'll probably see them as surprise DLC for Battle for the Grid before we see them anywhere else. But the Power Ranger <laughs> crossover they got going right now. Oh boy, yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> uh, let me say, let me say this before we leave, you guys. How do you guys feel about Ono going on stage asking if you guys still want Tekken Cross Street Fighter? I don't think that was a troll. I don't think it was a troll. I don't think it was a troll. But given that Tekken 8 is priority number one right now, right now for Namco, given that of Street course, Fighter 6 of is course. post rollout, is, is, I, even if they do it, we're talking towards the end of the PS5, Xbox Series X life cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, like well, I, I can see it still happening, but we're not we're talking about a, a collaboration that's at least and, three, four years and, off. 
I mean, see, and that's what I keep saying, bro. Like, especially the way these fighting game properties last basically the entire console generation, except if you're, except if you're NetherRealm. Mm-hmm. I, I feel they're just going to go through the route where they're going to bring in characters from their universe as guest characters and just call it the spiritual successor to Street Fighter Cross Tekken, Tekken Cross Street Fighter. And honestly, bro, that route makes perfect sense to me. So you're talking about like a character pack? Essentially like a Tekken yeah, character like, pack? Like just give us one or two, one or oh, two sorry, characters. Street Fighter character pack, technically. Yeah. yeah, give us one or two characters and call it that. Because, like, look, for example, look how they did Akuma, bro. Like, that made perfect sense. And then, yes, look at it now. Like, these games last the entire console generation now. What other projects are they going to be working on if it's not one of their own particular IPs? Mm -hmm. And then, remember, just like how I said with Tag Combat and Tekken 6, it was like night and day. And you don't want to create that type of divide anymore in your properties. Yes, like... Tekken, um, Namco has Tekken, they have Soul Calibur, you know, by extension, they have Fighter Z. They want to keep those properties within their realms. Yeah, if you want strict strict weapon based combat, Soul Calibur. If you want the biggest anime fighter IPs, Dragon Ball. If you want our signature flagship, Tekken. Oh, but you know, in this particular Tekken, guess who guess who's in it? We got we got um. Let's just start a random character. Oh yeah, yeah. Ryu is finally in the game. Boom. Yeah. And then you know Street Street Fighter. Oh um, let's integrate. Um. G- well, we know G- it. It would be if my prediction would be if they did a, a Street Fighter pack, it'd be Ryu, Ken, Chun Li, Guile, as like a, a Tekken official Tekken X Street Fighter DLC pack for eight. Too many characters. Two. 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 two? No. Nah, yeah. Bro. Two, bro. Too. That's too much. Too much. Because you saw it. Look what happened with Injustice with the whole Sub Zero and Raiden thing. Like, bro, people rioted to the point by the time that they released that deal, that second DLC pack, they already made a skin for Black Lightning. But mm, now, I mean, Nether Realms is a little different, though, man. They don't they move are. like everybody else. So I yeah. think, because think about it, the turtles all fit one person. Yeah. Literally. You know what I'm saying? One character, they're one DLC. Oh nah, man, I don't. Yeah, they're literally one, and then they're like a a a, a gem or a groove. Yeah, variant. So like, it fit. Uh, with um with Tekken, no, they're gonna do it, bro. Let me tell you why. Uh, let me tell you why I believe they'll do it. Two, then, two characters, bro. No, they're gonna two make characters. it completely. This is gonna be a pool. This is a joint effort, right? So, okay. so okay. it's a joint effort between two Japanese companies. It's gonna go a mm-hmm. lot smoother than it would with Marvel and the catastrophe that they did because, you know, they caused everybody to be held back. And that's an, But that's also another thing, bro. Right. Like, <laughs> crossovers now are very, very delicate because people want to be con- in control of their IPs. So that's why guest characters, and that's why they keep them to a limit. To a limit. Yeah. That's but, what I'm um, saying, bro. One, one to two, bro. I still, two. I still see it still happening. Otherwise, that would have never happened. I think it's going to happen, man. No, but then that's what I'm saying. You got to realize, bro, there are ways. Of, and, and that's why they use these terms, spiritual successors. You don't have to follow through with the same idea no more. Because, bro, like, yes, Street Fighter Cross Tekken was a disaster, bro. It was a disaster. Mm-hmm. And it was such a disaster that the, the Street Fighter characters in that game, oh, they gave it to us as DLC. For Old Street Fighter Four, yeah, and the stages along with it because they Why? realized they re- and the stages that 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 were Street Fighter based in that game because they realized it was such a disaster that we had to make up for. It. But yes, we you still gonna pay for it too. Mm-hmm. But it's the fact that nobody returned to that game after that because they wanted to keep everything central. So yes, bro, like these type of deviations like that, bro. I don't. Like, cause even for me, like the way SNK was coming back, I was hoping for an SNK cross Capcom to return, which would be great for classic reasons. But I have come to realize people want to keep their own things central, centralized now, strictly for tournament reasons. They want people to specifically talk about this particular project. That okay, Samurai Showdown, Rollback Netcode, go ham. 
yes, oh yeah, Capcom, ver- Capcom versus SNK, but technically it's a Capcom game since it's based on Capcom fighting style. Mm. So yeah, it's going to go to Capcom fighters. Oh no, we don't want that. Because everybody wants their own. Look, Especially look at SNK, Sega. who's looking to reestablish themselves. They yeah. Wanna, yeah. Look, 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 look what happened with Sega, bro. Sega revived a 15-year-old game. They're getting there. They, they revived a 13-year-old game strictly because we want our name back out there in the streets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like I said, bro, Get the word out, we every, back every, <laughs> everything is too centralized now, bro. And that's why, bro, we will never see another Marvel's Capcom ever again. They, well, they, on I the contrary, like, I feel like they would. Yeah, I think we might see another one. Um, I was gonna say, I, I would say conspiracy. You know, uh, they they do Tekken vs Street Fighter, and Tekken vs Street Fighter ends up being their Tekken tag for the console. Mm-hmm. A Tekken tag, a Tekken vs Street Fighter with Tekken tag mechanics. Mm-hmm. Perfect. I what do you it. mean, no, Tim? Nah, bro, mm. that would have set the streets on fire. What? <laughs> they'll make, they'll make so much because the thing is it's going to be like yo we split this 50 50 boom mm-hmm. all right and we make it we make it happen it was set the streets yeah on fire. bro i'm telling you because that trailer that trailer with kazuya it, we didn't even know that was going we just see ryu we like yo wait what's going on and then the song the song for the, i still remember that song Mm. Nah, that, you that too much in the, you, live, you live you live too much in the past, bro. Nah, bro. But what they, you have, it, what were you using examples all along the, through this whole entire podcast? No, to bro, put no, emphasis? No, like come no, on, bro. man. No, bro. Nah. Like I said, as a spiritual success and I guess that's my point of view because I saw the value of a spiritual successor. Because yeah, when I first saw the Akuma trailer, I was like, wait, are they hinting that they're trying to revive this? And then you know, in a in a simple way. It made sense. It was a, a technical a revival that we don't have to do a full-fledged game with 20-plus characters in the Tekken universe. We're just going to give you one to two icons that y'all know that y'all going to pick them anyway and just have fun. Because like oh. I said, bro, and it worked. And it worked. Bro, Akuma, Geese Howard... Even to a certain extent, well, I was very surprised he wasn't a Soul Calibur character. Noctis, how Noctis played. That bro. was a little random. That was random. It was random as hell. It was random as hell. You got two B Noctis. Why are they not fighting each other, bro? Hey. For real? What? That didn't make any sense. <laughs> crazy. Bro, crazy. Let me summon swords out of nowhere characters, crazy. and they're in two completely crazy. different games. What was no, uh, Monato from? <laughs> like literally. And then, then you brought in Negan. Negan was the last guest character, and like I said, bro, it it worked. It worked out. It worked out. It worked out. Spiritual. That thing, that thing was spiritual, spiritual successor all the way. I'm for it because, like okay. I said, bro, and I I do Waste. like and I do and I do like to see like bro. The, the centralized <laughs> products. I do I do realize that because I did realize it was kind of weird switching between games back in the day. Oh, I'm going from Ultra Street Fighter to back to Street Fighter Cross Tekken to Marvel vs. Capcom 2. It's like sometimes you do, and I guess that I, I guess this is personally for me, I do mm-hmm. like my central centralized things for particular things. Like Soul Calibur, I love that weapon-based combat. Like, I love it. I love it. And I know if I want the fullness of that, if I want to fully play the real Yoshimitsu, I go to Soul Calibur. I go oh, to Soul Calibur for the real with the sword. Yeah, I I go to Soul Calibur <laughs> for the real Yoshimitsu. Like, well, I, I, mean, I guess that Yoshimitsu uh, is a problem, dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is a problem. I guess, I guess to this, the, your point about uh, centralization, and, and that will actually lead to my next question. Uh, it all kind of fits, but you don't feel like with uh, centralization because I feel like what Capcom <clears> is <throat> prime. One of the things that I appreciated about Capcom is that you got different styles. For different tastes right so like you could always play a street fighter entry you could always do like an alpha or you could always do a street fighter 2 or street fighter turbo 3 but if you wanted something more flashy with assist you go the marvel vs capcom route yes. you know if you wanted more uh of a uh frame like for, sorry frame da- data where it's like uh the character size plays a part you go like tatsunoko versus capcom or snk versus capcom like i like that capcom at, at one point had different styles still featuring their characters and still being fighters 
that had, you know, different things for different people. Like, I always gravitated more towards the Marvel superhero versus Street Fighter and Marvel vs. Capcom over a mainline Street Fighter entry. You know, so to me, it's like I, I don't want it to get to a point where these creative spinoffs with these the IPs kind of go extinct. You know, like, I, I would love to have Marvel vs. Capcom reapproach at some point properly rather than like, oh, Infinite didn't work. You know, it, it was a good run. You know, I, I want these proper, these companies to still uh, not be afraid to kind of deviate into something yeah, that we haven't seen before. I mean, Infinite didn't work because they did what they did, man. Like, they gave us Winter Soldier. It was Soldier. a lot of things. Yeah, <laughs> it was a lot of things. Characters we don't care for. Like, mm-hmm. that. You're, for, you're forcing us to like um, the main Marvel U Cinematic Universe. But listen, Marvel's Capcom is so big that those guys have to be DLC. They cannot yeah. be your starting lineup. Thor, maybe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, the rest of them boys, get them out of here. Yeah. If it's not Captain they, A, if it's not, yeah, get them out of here. Just get yeah, them they, out they of here. They tiptoe with it with Ultimate Marvel's Capcom because, you know, you got like Rocket Raccoon. Like people you wouldn't have expected, but they took it too far with Infinite. Infinite was just like, I, like you said, I don't want to play as Winter Soldier. Guns, guns, I, I don't guns, even want to play as Captain Marvel. Yeah. You know, like, I, I no thank you. But uh, to to go into the, my bigger point, and then we'll move on from fighters entirely. Um, the Kyle Boseman um, thing that he did, he uh, he did like a his latest episode as of this recording. He did one about is there is there a fighting game genre without Street Fighter, Tekken, and Mortal Kombat? And I had to think about it because I was like, hmm, I you know obviously they're the big three of, the, of that particular genre of games, right? You know they're the ones that that shake the industry the most. You know, he brought up the point about, you know, there he, there really isn't much of a fighting game industry without those three franchises. And I thought about it, and I was like, you know, you know, at first, you know, your first reaction is like, nah, that can't be true. Like, look at, the, you know, you start rattling out the fighters in your heads. But I'm just like, I don't think yeah. he's wrong. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. is there <laughs> is there a world that you guys predict five, six, ten years from now where... If Street Fighter Eight, Tekken Agumon Eleven, syndrome. and Agumon you call, yeah, the syndrome. Agumon Syndrome, oh right? And perfect. Tim, I don't know if you watched. Yeah, it was a perfect <laughs> metaphor. Basically, he was saying to him that like uh, Ryu is a Street Fighter, Scorpion is a Mortal Kombat, Jin is a Tekken, what Agumon is a Digimon franchise, what Pikachu is a Pokemon. You can't have these franchises without these staple characters, and. In, you know, in the fighting genre, you can't have the fighting genre without these three properties. Yeah. And my thing is, like, I don't know. Like, is, is there a time where, you know, as fans of, of games, can we eventually move away from these franchises and something else I take be- over? I believe we can. Yeah, because, I think so. Because, cause like, you know, and I, I would say this, like, you know, games like, you know, from Arc System Works um, and French Bread, like Undernight, under night and birth really showed me wow like a new IP could truly hold some weight out here in this world in these streets. Mm-hmm. Even even to the point where like where Blaze Blue was getting Blaze Blue was really like, yeah, bro, we could hold we could hold some weight out here. We can. I get it, like those three are the pillars. Mm-hmm. I get that one hundred percent. But you do realize they are getting to a point where they want to close out these stories. They do. I do believe with Mortal Kombat 1, like, yeah, <laughs> this might be the last reboot we get. Because it kind of feels that way. Yeah, it kind of feels that way, bro. Like, yeah, what they did with MK9, that was pretty cool. That was mm-hmm. pretty cool. They saw, like, with, with 10, they realized, oh, yeah, we we a little bit too far. And, and 11 was trying to, like, all right, let's make this... Pl- um, wholesome, mm-hmm. and you know, because look what happened with Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur technically got a reboot. That's that was a reboot technically. So, yeah, which gave it new life that it, that it needed. The reboots I've ever seen. <laughs> it which gave it which gave it the new life that it technically needed. Where I do foresee another one coming, mm-hmm. but you could tell they are trying to really exit out because you know it goes back to our previous conversation with Street Fighter. They don't know what to do with this story, bro. They don't. Mm-hmm. They don't know what to do. This hub world that was that was a smoke screen, bro. That was a smoke screen. It was cool. They don't... It was cool. It, it was cool. It, 
I, I think Whatever. we know Capcom is not known for their story sprints when it comes to their fighting games. So I felt like the hub was the next best, next, ah, the next best thing. I don't need any more Nikali based story mode. Charlie rising from the ashes as a cyborg. Like no, 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 no. Just give me. If, if this is what we're gonna do, I'll take the hub. Thank you. You know, terrible. Like, uh, <laughs> terrible. Terrible. <laughs> yeah. But well, go ahead, Tim. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off. No, nah, man. It, 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 yeah. I do, I do foresee a world without them. Like, cause even for like you know to go back to one of the OGs of OGs, Killer Instinct and Virtual Fighter. Look how they're being revived, bro. They're being but, revived. They but are you don't being feel rev- like. You don't feel like because the thing is with even with Killer Instinct and, and Virtual Fighter, it's like it's almost like in those instances the companies are getting in their own way. And when I say that, it's like. We talked about this last pod that got released about how Microsoft doesn't seem to see the value in Killer Instinct for whatever reason, you know. So it's like while it could kind of rise back to prominence, it's like are, is Microsoft going to take enough faith and resources to really push it back to the forefront? Time will tell. Mm-hmm. Time will tell. I will say this on more on Sega's standpoint, especially due to what the fighting game tournament is like in Japan. Bro, Virtua Fighter is going to make a great, significant comeback. Hmm. It is going to make a great, significant comeback. And yes, like, you know, like, yeah, you know, I do believe Tekken is gonna, is the closest one to, like, concluding their story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because the way how they handle Heihachi and Kazuya is like, yeah, well, all right, all that's left now is Kazuya and Jin. You can't stress this out any longer. Please don't. Do not so, want to see another mission so, storyline. So they're they're close to being done. And then, you know, maybe they'll maybe they'll focus more on their Soul Calibur property. But I do foresee like, yes, a lot of games are reaching that their peak and they just want to conclude. Um and yes, you know, newer IPs could really take that. And I do feel like we have the variety of players now, especially in this era, where they could see that. Like, cause like, bro, like to this day, like, you know, Anthony, you and I talk about this all the time. Look what happened with Skullgirls, bro. This game literally died three times. Mm-hmm. And it is still kicking like No Man's Sky. Still mm-hmm. kicking. Still kicking to the point where it got character DLC pack revival. Yeah. Rev- like, the the current owner had some sexual charges, harassment charges. The and some, some, I think the parent company like bought it and saved the day. Like, no, we are not letting this IP die. Mm-hmm. Got them clean up out of there and kept going. <laughs> kept kick, kicking them out and kept going, bro. Mm-hmm. So, like, yes, bro. Like, they like, like I said, and it goes back to like a previous conversation, man. Fighting games are the definition of longevity, and but also transition. Longevity, but also transition. Like, yes, something could really take its place. And they could move something with with that. I do feel like you know, down the line, maybe Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, and Tekken will be used as templates for newer IPs. Mm. To go back to my point about spiritual successors, you could create those, man. Okay, okay. I was gonna okay, ask Jory, so- uh, and I'm gonna ask too with that because uh, Jory, you're always the one of like either a reboot or character designs. Do you feel like yeah. there's enough potential um, for new okay. characters that grip you? So- you know? So let me let me say this about the big three. Like number one, those 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 guys are like Jordan, Kobe, <laughs> and LeBron. That, and LeBron. <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, I'm 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 not gonna watch basketball after this. I'm done. Like you know, I don't care anymore. <laughs> you know, mm. but um, okay, because you're just not gonna get that level of quality with the budgets that these uh, studios have or the talent. It's like those guys hit the golden ratio of everything a fighter can be with mm-hmm. those with those three. Um, virtual fighter, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be a classic success. It's just gonna is you know it's gonna it's gonna be like you know the fan like yo this guy actually has fans that rapper who has fans you know it's actually possible now and they'll like- um, they'll make they'll make money. It'll be at mm. it'll be at every um <clears throat> evil Audi. Mm-hmm. But um like S and K, you know, I don't see S and K ever 
taking a spot back because you know if they don't, them boys don't find to that to the yeah. I mean, it, it, they're gonna be just like it's gonna be just like Virtual Fighter. It's gonna be there. It's not gonna be lesser. It's just not gonna be what it once was to how it was when it when it existed during the Capcom era. Oh, this Cap S N K Capcom. It's not gonna be that. Um, or if it does, it's gonna take a while. Um. So I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna. I feel like the momentum they have is is not gonna be there, man. I, Killer Instinct has more momentum and can easily come back and be just as popular again. The thing with Killer Instinct is Microsoft understands this IP. They have nobody to make it. Iron Galaxy is busy doing their own thing. They can't hire them. They have nobody to make it. Phil created that season system. Microsoft created a season system where you can know mm-hmm. you don't want to buy every character. You could buy each and every one and then through a loop, you could pick which one you like when it's a free trial of them. So then they come at, came out with the season passes. They have nobody to make it. And if you're going to do a fighting game, especially like Killer Instinct, so Microsoft knows like, yo, we have people with guns outside. This property is a big deal. They're not going to give it to anybody to make so they have to wait. They have to wait out weather the storm. It coming back during Evo and being a part of Evo just lets you know that, like, okay, guys, we need to build momentum back again before we release another one. Them saying, hey, guys, how you doing? Alien Galaxy, hey, we're free now. We're free. <laughs> we're free to We're free to work on stuff. That was a hint. Here, here's the, my thing is, I also feel, yeah, the spiritual successor route could work, but also... Go back to your other IPs that you abandoned. Like, you know, we said this in past podcasts. Street Fighter, come on. R- rival schools. If you want to keep things in the Street Fighter universe, rival schools is right there. Easy right transition. There. Easy transition. If you want to go the Halloween Street Fighter route, Dark Stalkers is right there. Bro, put some new money behind existing IPs. I mean that could that could even be um, your version of Mortal Kombat, right? We have ghouls and ghouls yeah, because yeah, because technically, cause technically it had blood. cartoonish blood, blood. Yeah, in it. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, bring it back, bring it back to like you could easily do that. Why are you afraid? Let Street Fighter be Street Fighter. Hey, you guys want Street Fighter type graphics with blood? Let's go with Dark Stalkers. Like even where like let me just say like um Nether Realm like you know when, if you're ever done with the peak of Mortal Kombat you know you have a whole DC universe where technically you could go almost go the the Justice League Unlimited route guess just, just give us a bunch of random DC heroes and villains just be brawl honest, it out. I would actually like to see Nether Realm do a uh, I don't know what they would title it um I don't know what they would even use as the marketing for it. But I would almost want them to make a guest character style fighter. Like the way that they were able to make Rambo, Alien, Jason, uh, Freddy Krueger work. I'm like, just make a fighter of every movie property from the 80s to the 2000s. Jean Claude Van Damme versus Wesley Snipes, Passage 57. Oh, snap. I'd Um, buy it. Yeah, what? Versus Neo? Versus Keanu Reeves from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'd buy it. Yeah. I'd buy it. Yeah, in terms it, of new property, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how they afford that licensing. Oh, like, you know, it'd um, be that'd be a <laughs> night and that's mayor. And that's why I keep saying, like, bro, that's why they're kind of sticking to that centralization, bro. No with- licensing stuff. Licensing stuff has gotten very crazy, bro. Mm-hmm. Especially with, and, and I would say this on the human aspect of things, ego. Mm-hmm. That too. Ego. That ego, too. Bro. Yeah. That too. It's, it's, what it's, makes it's, you think that my character deserves to be in your game with your characters? Yeah, it's ego, man. So that's why it's 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 much as of and I would say in this current climate, the centralization stuff makes sense, bro. Mm-hmm. It just makes sense. Okay, all right, uh, Jory. Any uh, last thoughts? Uh, I know you kind of got cut off mid thought uh, before we move on to the last two topics of the night. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's like. Those game, those names, those games are so heavy, so heavy with, they inspired everything else that exists. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how do you get past that? 
Uh, how do you get past right. that if you're SNK? What do you do different? Do you, you do, your characters don't look as cool as Street Fighter characters? That's me. Uh, they look cool. It depends you on. I like Fatal Fury's characters personally. I think they're really cool. Okay, Fatal Fury. Um, but like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like you know you and then you can't. But the thing is, you're gonna find the the beauty about um this fighting game arena is you don't have to be a big name to survive. But are you gonna are you gonna hit me with the wallet that I need when I say, hey guys, um, we're having trouble. The the funding coming out from these companies, man. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, nobody, nobody, money, dollar versus dollar. You're not touching MK. <laughs> you're not touching MK. They can buy, literally put Rambo in a game. You know mm-hmm. how much that cost, and they can make yeah. it back up in two weeks. Easy. And not just the character, but to get and the like the, the, li- from, the um... likeness, uh, yeah, and the <laughs> voice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> One thing I would say, bro, never deal with absolutes. Never say really never like that. You gotta leave room for growth. That's and that's right. and that's and that's what and I'm saying, it's bro. possible. Yeah, it's possible, but it's just it's gonna because, be very right. hard. Yeah, yeah. Because like very for hard. for example, look look at the the world of anime. Look how many big threes transcend transcend from certain generations to the next. It's the same thing with fighters, bro. Yes, like we're old men, like we're in our thirties, and you know we've seen these hardcore staples literally go through from our childhood to adulthood now. But yes, there's going to be a point where these things are going to live out their life and something mm. else is going to take take over. Yeah. And yes, you know, depending on what system we got at the time, if we want to pick it up, yeah, we'll like it, we'll do comparisons, but you got to understand this, bro, like, this is the new it. This is the new product. Project this is the L? New face. They gotta Probably, possibly, no, 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 no possibly, because nah, bro. Because the thing is, like, I was just thinking, like, we don't also don't want like the the uh, the Dragon Ball Super era of these big threes either, where it's yeah. like yes. every now and then you yes. get a really good idea, but yes. for the most part, you could have kept this. Yes. This is what we're doing. That, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 Issa, like Issa said, with insecure, don't overstay. You're welcome. Yeah, and I think uh, to before we move on, I think that's what the the risk of all these uh big three are at like you know again the reboot from mortal kombat's cool you know i i think it'll, it'll definitely breathe some new life into the franchise but we're kind of getting at the point of like i don't know how many times you could reintroduce me to these characters i've known since i was five you know um i don't want to go into my 40s uh hearing the the new new story about sub-zero you know like i'm like i, I it's it's fine can't you know like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bring in, bring in new best boy Cole Young from the from the movie universe <laughs> with the power of gold armor plating. <laughs> nah, come on, man. <laughs> come on, come on. Let's, let's, uh, let's stop playing right but, there. Man. Let's stop playing right there. Let's... I mean, yo, we're an entertainment podcast, bro. <laughs> yeah, man, Don't but even to, mention uh, that to... movie. <laughs> Yo, they did Sub Zero right. Let's not, you know, we can't hate everything. Sub Zero was done correctly. And Scorpion, and that was about it. Yeah, and that even Scorpion, have, they got a little have, dodgy yeah. towards it. <laughs> oh no, yeah, towards the end, yeah, it got mad. Yeah, it got crazy. Yeah. But like in the beginning, perfect. Yeah, he was cool. Yeah. He was cool. Yeah. But then he it started manifesting been, himself through his dagger, and I was just like, yeah, all right, it should have just been that. It should have just been that. Should have just been right. <laughs> But uh, you know, because again, we 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 did cover it last part, but you know, this is the director's cut. Um, we'll go with the one that we we spent a little bit of time on because I think we're gonna have the same takes on it. Uh, Baldur Gates three success, right? You know, uh, we I had asked you guys on the previous pod, you know, at what point does a, a a game selling out, you know, jumping out the gym, you know, possibly win you over or not? And I use the the uh, example of of Diablo four. Diablo has been popular for as long as I can remember. Every Diablo, I'm like, it sells millions and millions of copies. Whoopi Goldberg plays Diablo. (laughs) Well, this one is still doing okay, but you know uh, the monetization things have started to like really affect uh, gameplay in Diablo. But it's just like I look at Diablo gameplay, I'm like, this is not for me. I don't, I I don't find this interesting. You know, and even Baldur's Gate, I'm like, I've never liked Dungeons and Dragons. I know I've appreciated the spinoffs of it. Yu-Gi-Oh basically is Dungeons and Dragons with anime, um, but it's like vault, like Dungeons and Dragons just was never for me, 
right? So you're hearing all these things, these these rave reviews of Baldur's Gate 3, and it's a 50-hour campaign, and you can uh, hook up with anybody and anything. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know the, the, the NBC that you dap up in Chapter 1 might save your life in Chapter 24, you know, and... When you see these things, you know, I'd ask you guys, um, and, you know, again, just for the listeners, you know, what aspects, if any, uh, when you see these things, do you want to see spill over into other games? You know, like, what, what do you want to see this spill over into a Final Fantasy? Do you want you know, like, what, is there anything about these games that you hope changes the industry or just like, all right, that's cool for them. I'm glad you guys got your game of the year. Okay. For, 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 I'm happy, yeah, I'm happy they got their game of the year, right? Um, but for the people, who want very who are story driven and want the story to to change their outcome i think your interaction with the ant world to change the outcome or the ending of the game that's going to be perfect for somebody who wants to make that type of game i don't mm-hmm. think every gaming company has to has to copy them you know um, you're not looking for that level of immersion across the no board. no but it, it does it call for it you know I don't want to play Devil mm-hmm. May Cry, and because I didn't hit this man with a 19 Dunguri combo, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now I got to fight. <laughs> I got to fight Mundus, fused with Goken, fused with, uh, I mean, who, uh, Bayonetta. Uh, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm, it, it, if it calls for it, if it doesn't call for it, then, you should know, we fine. Chance. Yeah, like, but if I'm playing, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, you should have finished that triple S combo <laughs> when you had the chance yeah. to use Andrew and Rudra. You know what I'm saying? Agni and Rudra. You know what I'm saying? If it doesn't call for it, if I'm playing something like Cyberpunk, something like that better be in the game. Hmm. If you're selling gotcha. me this game gotcha. where the narrative changes the outcome of the um, of what's happening around you, that's going to be perfect for a Witcher. That's going to be perfect for a Mass Effect uh, where the characters and interaction with NPCs matter. Uh, I think it's going to be perfect. Um, Elden Ring does this, but not to that degree. It does this mm-hmm. more with exploration. Like... You don't have to start off like this. Zelda, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. Um, prime example. I did not beat Sidon's Quest. I want. I started wandering off, and now I'm in the volcano. Hmm. And in that area, the enemies are a lot stronger. It's all the way up north. Very difficult terrain to get. I don't even have uh, enough money to buy the suit, and I'm playing it with just the helmet. And I'm inside the cave in the depths, and I don't even have the necessary powers to even move around there. But my experience for Zelda, and they have a continuous narrative, but the exploration speaks alongside the story. My experience is different. Now, if it calls for it in a game, then yes, Baldur's Gate is the prime example of how to do it right, um, according mm-hmm. to what everybody's saying. Uh, KOTOR mm-hmm. is a prime example of how to do it right. Um that's Knights of the Old Republic for anybody who doesn't yeah, know the uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for the audience, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's the perfect game to borrow from. If you're going to give me something like a Deus Ex, um, a, a very story, a narrative-driven game, make these endings make sense. Make these endings feel unique. Make my experience feel different. And at the same time, when I go back, oh, man, I didn't know I could do that. It gives it... These games are made to be played over and over again, so... Yes, that's the perfect way to do it. Um, I think that's perfect, but I don't think not every game has to follow that. You know, uh, that um, that that, that law or that that blueprint. Yeah. yeah, not every game has to follow that blueprint because it just doesn't call for it. So you would like, for example, it doesn't take away anything from say like Starfield. The Starfield doesn't have that level of immersion for you. Well, um, Starfield should. Um, I hope so. I'm not mm-hmm. expecting it to, but I would hope it has something. Because that's, you know, these are the guys that they specialize in that. Like, um, gotcha. oh, you know, Skyrim, for example. Skyrim blew me away. Um, I saw my, my buddy was playing that game right now. Man, my <laughs> buddy was playing the game, right? He was playing the game. He talked to this dude. He said, hey, you sure you want to join this group? All right, um, do this, do that. Went to sleep. A vampire shows up in my room and says, "Yo, come with us." Ah, uh, 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 that's crazy. I go outside. Mm. Some dude, some dude is running. He's handy. Hey, can I give you this? Like, sure. Boom, bucks. A group of men on horseback. Hey, did you see this guy? 
I'm like, nah, I didn't see him. Did he give you anything? Nah, he didn't give me anything. Okay. One dude stays behind because he thinks you're lying. I just had to see for myself. Now that I know. Draws out a sword. We fight. I kill him. I leave. I go to the next town. They say, hey, yo, that clothing you got on there, it belongs to my buddy. That's serious. You know, Mm. (laughs) Starfield better have something crazy like that. You've been given, you. you've been delivering on that. Now you're going to be left to that standard. Now, Baldur's Gate is going to be the ruler now for anybody who wants to make that type of game. They're like, yo, why am I playing this? If, Bald, you, you know, Baldur's Gate is right here, why couldn't you guys do something similar? Mm. You know? Um, you know, it's it's going to be a standard now. If you're going to, if now if you're a, cup, a developer that wants to make a game similar to Baldur's Gate, good luck. I, I guess at that point, and then Tim, I'll ask you uh, for your take on it. I think I agree. I think it needs to be genre specific, right? If, if that's what you came for, that's what should be delivered. I would like to see in terms of spillover, right, with some of the more mainstream games, I would like to see more uh, game-paced uh, missions. So, for example, with the upcoming Spider-Man 2, I've never really got, like, I get the idea of convenience, right, when it comes to side quests, but I've never really got behind the idea of Let's say you needed to help uh, this string of robberies in this in Queens, right? In Spider Man Two, it shouldn't be that mission that's just sitting there chilling until the, until I beat the main story, right? I think there there needs to be a point where it's like, hey, if you don't, I don't know, save Queens now, if you want to go back and do that mission later, now you have to fight ten more gangs than you had to the first time because you didn't get to it in time as a hero. You prioritize something else, and now Queens is being overrun by. I don't know, Wraith and her uh, uh, battalion of anti-cops. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want to see more things like that, of like, you don't get to pick up and put down these side quests as you please. I think that level of immersion, I think, would be cool on a more mainstream level without having to be Baldur's Gate level of like, that we pedestrian that. you saved. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That, but, yeah. yeah, where it's just like, you can still do the mission, but now it escalates in which you have to get done in order to achieve the mission. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, but Tim, what do you think? What do you think about it? how Baldur's Gate may or may not affect the industry. I know you said in the last while you'd be willing to maybe give it a chance on a discount, but go ahead. Um, I think it would, it would change from game to game basis, like mm-hmm. in terms of more e- immer- more immersive world, I would say. Because to be honest, even Storm 4's, um, some of the DLC stories had that, where there was a mission where you either had a choice to give Rock Lee this herb to make him 120% stronger, and you had to fight him, or, but if you did this other favor, where you did this a favor for Anoki, you had to fight Anoki at 200% extra mm-hmm. power. So, what well, I've seen plenty of times, like, where Rock Lee is like a cheat code in terms of his taijutsu, so I chose Anoki, and boy, I was on that fight for 20 whole minutes trying to fe- defeat this dude like mm. like I one, was gone I was sending you to awakening state <laughs> bro I, no, and, yeah, no he was in his awakening state like you had to oh. fight Anoki you had to fight Anoki in his awakening state at 200 well 180 whatever he, he mm. was over the level of 100 extra power bro when I tell you I gara sand tsunami spanned that entire fight bro sand tsunami like bro, I did not want this man to get five feet of me, bro. Right. Duck and if he did, and, and, if, and if he <laughs> did, triangle, triangle, circle. Oh, take this sand spear into my mom's pyramid, crush. Mm-hmm. But it was the fact, like, wow, it really gave me a hard decision. Like, bro, like, I don't want to fight none of these dudes, but I have the choice. I have, I have to choose in order to like finish this mission. So it punished you either way. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I do like that level of immersion. Um, I do feel like certain games do need it, especially especially since a lot of people want to get more into the open world type of feel of there's endless possibilities what you could do. Like, you know, I remember when the infamous games came around that they highlighted hints of that. Like, oh, if you did this mission, you cancel out these. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Or if you did this, you know, there, you're gonna have to fight different enemies. You're gonna have different powers that you have to use at your disposal. Different bosses, even. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, I I do understand that type of aspect, or even like the story changes. So, like, yeah, it gives the player something to really choose from. Um, and I remember like Quantum Dream did a lot of games like that, 
Mm-hmm. Um, especially like the last game was Detroit, um, Become Human. There was a lot of different decisions you can make. Heavy Rain. Um, yeah, so those type of games, man. I would like to see more of those, um, especially with Quantum Dream making a Star Wars game. Like, I mean, that should look, be interesting. I definitely want to see like what new elements they could bring in there. Is it going to be like, like a Telltale game? No, it's not. No, it's not no, like no. it's not like Telltale's. So Telltale's is just like it's almost like choose your own adventure. Quantum Dreams is more like, like Tim said, it's like imagine. Uh, it's a again, cinematic, a, a cinematic story. That, oh, okay. it is choose your own adventure style, but it's more interactive than Telltale games are. So you won't be able to do any combos or anything like that. It'll just be like yo, select this, grab the cup here. Uh, think. Like Combos Shenmue's, is a weird world. Yeah, yeah. Like, think Shenmue's okay. quick time events. Just that? Story. Only? Oh. Yeah. To some degree. To some degree. Uh, That's all. You never, you, Quant- you, never played, you never played Quantum Dreams games before? No, nah, man. I couldn't do Heavy Rain, bro. Like, I, I didn't want to play cutscenes, murder mystery. Um, And plus, at it the time, good. and plus, at the time, um, it came out, man. Like, you had Metal Gear Solid. No, I was not gonna put. I was not gonna pick that over Metal Gear Solid, man. Like, four. Yeah, I, no. It was good. I, 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 <laughs> nah, I think I played every Quantum Dreams game except for uh, Detroit. There was no game. time. There um, was no time. I had Gears of War been... three just came out. There was no time. No. No time for that game, man. Yeah, like I get it. Like certain people need certain levels of stimulation because, like, sometimes, like, leave, even look at Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is just Oppenheimer, like, yeah. it's a. Yeah, it's like a lot of rich dialogue. And, you know, there's certain people who care for that type of stuff. There are certain people like, yes, because you got to realize sometimes, man, it's hard to deliver on all aspects and certain mm-hmm. properties all in one. Physics, story immersion, um, great combat, extracurricular activities and all that other stuff like that. It, it's hard to deliver on all those aspects, man, because you kind of need like a separate team to do all of those things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Witcher is that... the best example, and I would say um, the Witcher is probably prime example for if you're gonna do a third person because they is, side quests. I think, the thing with, I think the thing with the Witcher and and um, I think that's the issue, and I guess we'll kind of move on after this last part of the Witcher. But it's like the, the thing with the Witcher is like it's which is also the issue with Baldur's Gate for me, right? It's like even if I wanted to give it a chance, you know, like Tim said earlier, we are adults, adults. I don't have Time. 40 hours to sit and sift through this game. I barely have two hours to play the games that I actually really want to play. I'm sitting there playing Jedi Survivor, and you know Jedi Survivor, they do not hold your hand. Here's your hollow map. Figure it out. I got to one mission. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and put this in rest mode. I can't do this right now. I can't figure out if it's this wall or that wall right now. You know what I'm saying? It's like I am going to, you know, and I, I feel like that's the, that's the, the conflict of like you want a game that's going to be worth the wait, right? It took six years to make Baldur's Gate three. You know, you want a game that's going to be worth seventy dollars out, you know, out of your hard earned money as an adult, right? But I also don't want to play Witcher three until I'm forty. And for either. those of you guys listening, please subscribe. This would give us all the time in the world to give you things that you want. <laughs> you want to play. Shameless plug. You but when we watch. do have our... <laughs> yeah. When you Please. subscribe, like, and watch, and we launch the Patreon, and you guys support us, I will have 40 and 50 hours to dedicate to... Oh, yes. And we will... The games of your choosing. You will be on the right. uh, choose <laughs> Choose our stream t- uh, 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 tier of Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, you yeah, go ahead. And you choose the games that we stream, but uh, yeah, no, I just, no, I just feel like when it comes to too much, it's a too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joy, yeah, like... Baldur's Gate, Joy. <laughs> 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 what was that? You don't <laughs> respect no so? Oh no, nah, forty-eight hours right, stream, buddy. Right, right. Forty-eight hours, all the storms. Go ahead. <laughs> But yeah, I think it's just I think there's just that aspect too of like you know when does immersion become too much? Like when are we getting, you know, again knock on wood, getting too much for your dollar? You know, I think there is that there is that fine line too of like I do want to be able to turn this off sometimes and and feel at peace. You know what? I thought about that. Some people just want to play one game at this age now. Mm. Um, and you know what? That that might be that if it takes them six months. 
they haven't. That's it, man. They, they, it's, it's six months. They bought that whole game. They focus on that one thing. So they don't have the time, and that's the meal for them. You know, um, you know that's. And I, I, I thought about that too, man, because I was like, man, uh, when Monster Hunter came out, Monster Hunter World came out. That's still playing it. Changed it, <laughs> dog. I was like, yo, this game is fire. I, I always hated it, man, but I gave it a try and I started to understand what the hype was about, man. But World did everything for me that I liked: the visuals, um, the creativity of the monsters. The texture of the monsters, the weapons, um, that whole, I, and it's a simple process. Like, it never gets crazy to the point where I got to save a village. You know, it's nothing mm-hmm. like I'm managing mm-hmm. stuff like that. It's just, you know, you the hunt has its um, special um, modes or whatnot. But I think some people just want to play probably now. They just, they could focus on one thing. For us, there's too much things that we want to play. That's where we have right. the... That's why we're like, there's not enough time. But for those guys, yeah, bro, Baldur's Gate is all they play. They're that adult. That's they a, buy a one point. game. That's it. I'm an adult now. I can't. I'll have to buy this game next year. I play this game for six point. months. Call it a day. For us, Street Fighter. We have too many things we love, and too many things that could probably snag our attention. I know when that mm-hmm. really drop, y'all boys. I'm gone. Yeah. My PlayStation gonna be on every day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for me, for me, everything is just a countdown to Spider Man too. You know, oh, and, but yeah. you're, to your point and of like, it's like how many so. games can I beat before then? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's rightfully so. I mean, Spider Man is fantastic. The graphics, the fidelity. The, I'm playing Spider Man at 120 frames. I'm like, yo, you know, I didn't. This is my eyes feel like they're being watered. You know, so <laughs> I'm like, well, man, I can graphics. see. Well, like, who, like nobody will get off this game, man. You know. Um, mm-hmm. Me turning on, you know, and your TV count, man. Your your TV counts. You you got these next gen systems, and your TV is not um doesn't support the features that the uh, PlayStation or Xbox come with. Man, you're missing out, man. No, you're right. I I, I play a performance mode because that's the only mode I got. I don't yeah, have you I don't have high high fidelity mode on my TV. <laughs> performance mode only. Thank you. Uh, before I embarrass myself. <laughs> yeah, but um, that's what I wanted to say uh, regards in regards to that. You know, some people just play one game, man, and that's as that's, an adult, no. I that's think okay. that's that's a that's a fair perspective. I think I I didn't look at it that way because again, you're you're right. All three of us um are in, engaged and engulfed in so many different types of games that are just like we and we don't care. We're gonna get another <laughs> one to get the stat. You you made you proved them like yo man. I got this, and then I go on an ebook. Jedi Survivor, forty three bucks, Jordan. Huh? That's an Uber Eats meal. You don't have to eat today at all. I'll make a few sandwiches and make it work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bologna at best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and make it work. I, I will uh, payment plan my way through it. It's fine. You know? Yeah, man. Um, but getting to our last topic of the night. Oh, Tim, you have a thing you want to say or are you ready for it? No, no, no. I'm good. Go ahead. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. Uh, getting into the last topic of the night, which again we did cover last pod, but of course you gotta you gotta give the you know you gotta give the people what they want. You can't just skim over it. You know it, it's the company that shaped our childhoods. It's the company that introduced us into M for mature audiences only. It is the game that your parents would put you on immediate punishment if they found out you were playing it, and they happen to walk by and hear some of the things that were coming out of that television. Rockstar has now. Shot themselves in the foot again by releasing Red Dead Redemption as a port for the Switch and the PS4. Not the PS5. Not with multiplayer. Yes, you're getting Undead Nightmare. But, hey, that's why we're bundling it for you on the last-gen console for the low, low price of $50. And coming off the heels of... You know, having a, another company bundle some of our most iconic games in history. GTA 3, Vice City, San Andreas. Um, yeah, bundling all that together and, and getting uh, terrible reviews about the graphics and the remaster. Oh, and uh, did we mention that uh, we had shut down Red Dead 2 online before it even really started? And uh, yeah, hope you guys are ready for uh, more GTA 5 online DLC. So, fellas... 
you know, I did ask you guys separately, but now that we're here together as a conglomerate, right, as, as the pod boys, how are we feeling uh, that Rockstar, you know, has once again uh, done a tone-deaf release of yet another one of their undisputed classics? That discipline you know, is let me be clear. Red Dead Redemption is an undisputed classic game. How are we feeling? You said the perfect definition, man. It was it was tone deaf. It really was. Because I do feel like, yes, you know, the online for Red Dead 2 is still active. Mm-hmm. I do feel like they could have put more marketing into it and just much more care, like different modes, different... Uh, I mean, they still have minor things like, oh, this week is double XP, this is this and that. I just felt like the marketing, they just kind of just abandoned it. They really just abandoned it, and, you know, everything was so GTA-focused. Mm-hmm. And, like, you basically treating, like, one of your biggest IPs as a stepchild, in a sense. Now, the whole port thing is, I think they should have just left it. Um, I really feel like it's very, 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 very pointless. Because when you really look at it, bro, you can't stretch ports out for too long. There's certain things that graphical power is just it just doesn't fit well with later things. And you know, most companies these days, they're doing like remasters, they're doing remakes from the ground up. And I do believe to a certain extent, if you do really care about longevity, these things are possible. I felt, you know, if you want to do a Red Dead, do a Red Dead remake from the ground up. Bless you. Bless you with the with the Red Dead Two world mechanics and graphic engines. Um, yes, bundle it with Undead Nightmare the same way with multiplayer. Mm-hmm. Give us a com- real complete package that warrants that amount of money. But you're telling me a port from the PS3 era, just with this sort of story expansion, which the story expansion probably is probably like an extra ten hours. Mm-hmm. That does not warrant fifty dollars for me. No, at all. Because imagine a world where it's like, to your point, Tim, it's like you you bundle Red Dead One and let's just say Red Dead Two. I right? say right, you do a, a partial remaster, Red Dead One with the Red Dead Two graphic engine, Red Dead do Red Dead Two combat mechanics. You sell them all as a bundle package. Again, you don't have, you don't have to change the story. Just you sell them as a bundle package. Add Undead Nightmare, scale up the graphics. At that point, as a bundle, you might even buy it for seventy. You know what I'm saying? Like if if all those things were intact. Dead the Dead Space remake is a prime example. It works. It works. It was. It yeah. was. Yeah, they did some minor tweakings to the story. Um, but it improved but it. it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But it was very minor, and it improved it, and it, it works. Now, if EA, a company very infamous as EA, is able to do that, can get that right. <laughs> come on, bro. Come on. How do you? How you do have, you treat? And you haven't done nothing with Red Dead 2 ever since you launched it. So it's kind of like you had a good amount of time to think this over and do it right. Yeah. Simple. Joy, I wanted to ask you because you made a really good point on our original recording about training your audience. So I wanted you to kind of like give us the, the, the abbreviated version of that point that you did so the viewers get a chance to hear it. What do you mean? What am I? Well, I don't remember what I said. Because uh, we were comparing, uh, we were comparing ports, right? And uh, I brought up the whole thing about how Nintendo, you know, they'll 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 port you to death. Uh-huh. You know, uh, they'll release Bayonetta on the Switch store at full price. You know, like hey, you want to pay Bayonetta two in sixty frames per second? That'll be sixty dollars. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and okay, uh, I remember what reports I was of you know, where, and you, you know, you kind of got into the whole thing of. Premium consoles and premium packages. So I just want yeah. I know you might have extra points, but I'm like, man, that was mm. <laughs> Okay, so with 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 that, right? Um Nintendo, you can expect it because Nintendo never promised you that you're gonna get top notch quality. You know. They it's, never it's did, funny, but right? you're right. <laughs> they never promised you that. They're gonna promise you mm. instead of you playing with one L C D panel, you can play with two. They're going to give you something like that and pitch it to you versus um, us getting a premium console, something like the PlayStation or the Xbox, to where Sony, I mean, Sony doesn't have advertisement for children. They don't have a children's department, children's games. They just make it. They just are. 
You know what I'm saying? But its primary focus is those who want story-driven games. You will get, come to the PlayStation. You want games mm-hmm. that look this good? Come come over here to Sony. And with what Rockstar did, that's like unacceptable. I'm not gonna buy. I'm not buying that. Not to mention how much money you guys made for Grand Theft Auto Five alone. You guys sold us that game three times. Yep. They, three it times. sold so well they give it away online uh, also on PC for free. You can download it on Steam for free. For free now. So now. Let's take that into account. Not to mention the money you guys made from the shark passes. Now, I I can't tell the difference between Saints Row and Grand Theft Auto because of all the craziness mm-hmm. you can do. So, you guys have the resources. You guys have the money. And these are your most important IPs that allowed you guys to get to where you're at. And this mm-hmm. is the treatment you guys give it. Crazy. San Andreas is the reason why any of your stories is hitting now. The Nico Bellic. Some people want to dispute, but uh, you know it's it was good. It was good. You know, um, um, the out of the DLC, uh, the Ballad of Gay Tony was probably one of the best DLCs I've ever played. Uh, mm. Third person action adventure game wise. Okay, wow. I didn't so, play it, um, but um, yeah, you know, back to that, like you know, and then Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption, an old West game. You got people playing that, like it's. Nobody business. You know, how do you... Even the first Red Dead was on um, people piqued interest. And it did it well enough to pop the tube. Um, mm-hmm. So now, for me, I'm like, I don't understand. Like, you know, uh, for us, it's not going to be acceptable for us, um, somebody, uh, for anybody with a console that, like an Xbox or a PlayStation. It's not going to be... It's not going to hit the same because we're expecting... We almost... Almost don't even consider like, yo, why are we getting this trash treatment? Why are we getting this trash visuals? I'm not playing that. You can literally see the triangles. It's just, it, it, <laughs> it oh, man. Not to mention, you got every AI version of uh, CJ out there. <laughs> so it's like we don't yeah. have in our minds. We see it as yo, this thing you about to go down. CJ. Like, yeah, we yeah. go. Oh man, what we should, what see. he should look like in in the mm. Grand Theft Auto Five uh, world. Man, this is gonna be amazing. We get to see, but no, none of that. So uh, I I don't know if I uh, hit the points that you wanted. Um, because I no, I yeah, you did. I think yeah. I think like you said, it's like it's 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 one what we're expecting, but two because of the the bar you've set, and then three, you know, it, it's it's like it's not like you guys don't have the resources. Right, it'd be one thing if it's like Rockstar kind of fell off and they just weren't able to, you know, put things no. together. It's like you. Have I will say this. I will say this. You need. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will say this. As much money as they make, they are not exempt from being the next Project CD Red. If they keep this mm. up, I'm already seeing the bitter taste buds coming out. Now it's it's starting to get more bitter. Nobody said nothing with the shark passes. We know it's fifteen year olds and ten year olds and nine year olds buying these passes. Fine, right? But you Mom, guys, Mom you doing this one game? He on yeah, there crazy. But now, <laughs> now, right? You want to drop the heat back to back? The first time we was like, okay, you know, Grand Theft Auto. They're probably working on Grand Theft Auto Six. We and then the leaks of Grand Theft Auto Six came out, and we heard the storylines. I was like, oh. Yo, what y'all, what you make? Yo, what's going on with this? Y'all better fix mm. this. Listen, no company's exempt. Keep playing with people money. Games is $70. You know how much they're going to charge for Grand Theft Auto? $100 if they feel like it. Easily. Easily. And you're going to buy yeah. it, right? So now, now you know, you're going to charge us this money. Pockets is getting tight. We will fight you. Don't think that these companies, these companies now are starting to understand. Like, yo, you saw what happened. With CD Projekt Red, when they they said they was dropping, look at Star Citizen. Star Citizen is even though this is a PC game, those people are like borderline robbing people now, man. Robbery. Mm-hmm. So now you know these people are like, okay, guys, we taking y'all to court. Starts. What's gonna happen? Listen, it's enough. If it's enough money, it it could happen. Get on your job, guys. Uh, nobody, no company's exempt. If there's anything that this, this generation... Gamers are too invested. 
that department is not a department where they're passive. I'm telling you. These people mm-hmm. tell you, listen, you're not getting my money. Look at fighting games. We care about these franchises so much. Yes, I love Marvel vs. Capcom. What's that? No robot netcode? Two weeks. Flatline. I don't care if you got Virgil and Dante in the game. Flatline. What? Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite? Wait, ain't no Wolverine? No Gambit? Flatline. <laughs> CD Projekt Red, what you said? Cyberpunk? My favorite genre? What you, what you telling me? Wait, wait, hold up. This the character custom that you was promising me? Hold up, these the graphics? Flatline. Y'all, y'all, they playing with it. Oh, Grand Theft Auto, oh. y'all made, y'all made how much billion? Oh, not nah, Grand Theft Auto now struggles to make uh, ends meet. Boom. Now all that money, all that money now is, y'all spent it, wasted it, patching up. Now because of that, y'all guarantee not to hit, y'all gonna have to do four installments for people to gain your trust again. Yeah. Don't don't do it. Don't play. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. You think you think <laughs> listen, as much as Mortal Kombat does what it does, they realize from eleven. Eleven should have been ten. Yeah. If yep. eleven was ten, <laughs> y'all, the reboot was not gonna be needed. But because stuff was looking tight, yo, we can't play Starfield? Yo. Listen, if we don't right. come with it, Tom Howard. <laughs> Ron Howard. I don't know his name. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Listen, Xbox, Phil, you're going to have to get, you're going to have to turn into 90s Xbox. This family friendly console thing you're doing does not work. It's Edgeman that allowed the Xbox to be. You cannot sell a product to kids called the Xbox. It's not going to work. It's built off yeah. of 90s energy, nuclear power plant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, you have to, it has to be edgy. Find a Cliff Bozinski to spice up things. Get an yeah. identity. Sony, it just is. I, I felt the tiki torches lighting up when Redfall dropped. I'm like, yo, Xbox got about one more time before. <laughs> and, and, to, and, to, and no, 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 no. <laughs> with, see, now here's the thing. Here's the thing with that, right? So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a CEO. Last thing I want to do is worry and hover around every department, right? So now mm. I see the department did not. Who looks bad? Me. Everything they do, like yo, Phil, what happened to that game you said you were gonna drop? So now Phil turns into someone we didn't want him to turn into. Goes back to the studios, guys. <laughs> Shoe factory. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, oh, or it? That's it. <laughs> That's it. You know what I'm saying? And so now there's going to be a tight, tighter watch. That's what happens with these companies. Like, he's working on deals over here. There's no time. Listen, you guys made this game before. Why isn't this happening? You guys made, um, what, for, um, not for honor. It's, I, I never played it. Not Frozen, man. They made, um, Dishonored. The game, yeah, yeah. They know, made Dishonored. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know what Xbox made. Yeah, they made, <laughs> they made Dishonored. <laughs> Those are the people that made Dishonored. And now, like, what's happening now? Why guys? What, why got? Why can't you guys produce? You guys made a full fledged game before. What's happening now? So now, the torches is up. Swords is drawn, guys. If you don't drop a game, y'all walk in the plank. I think Phil has too many yes men. The company needs edge. They need a um the guy who made um. The first God of War. They need a, they need somebody like that who's gonna be like, yo, mm. Phil, I think it's trash. They need a Cliff Bazinski with uh, some edge. It doesn't have. Sorry to go off topic, but I'm just 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 to fall in line of what these companies. They, no, it, they need it, to get it, it together. It all comes full circle. Like you they have, need to you get have it together. So many times before Nintendo you know, trying to yeah. patent gameplay mechanics. Go somebody. Go somewhere with that. Y'all not even the top notch in performance. Right, your developers are fighting. They can't even do what they need to do because you guys refuse they to put do power in your system. Technical wizardry to get half wizardry on a switch. Wizardry mm-hmm. and count on a delay, a two-year delay. Count on it. Nintendo mm-hmm. know they have to agree because the technology is not going to do it. Breath of the Wild, should, my switch should explode. I'm waiting for it to explode, bro. I'm yeah. waiting. Kid. <laughs> yeah. The I'm amount of frame drops I had in Bayonetta three, I'm like, this is. Right. Oh they, they my god! Do. And I stopped playing the game. I can't do yeah, it. You can't you can't you can't make me somebody who's playing one twenty frames, 
to be like, okay, I, I it's Mario. I'm gonna no, I'm not doing it. Nope. Mm-hmm. Nope. I I guess to to bring things uh full circle and kind of end this topic and uh, wrap up the pod. Do you guys feel like this puts any additional pressure on Grand Theft Auto Six? Yeah. Does Grand Theft Auto Six become a do or die now? Yeah. Yes. It's 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 getting there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's getting there. Cause now, interesting. I'm gonna let you go, Tim. Cause now, people are not messing with the storyline or the speculative storyline where you you're forcing us to play as what type of character from Florida? What? And if he's not, if these characters are not greater than that cast in part th- uh, five, good night. Yeah. Good night. Uh, five scratched everybody's itch. We got mm-hmm. characters we didn't even know we need, and they solid characters. I still don't know how. I, I'm I'm still amazed at how well they write people of color. Yeah, I'm amazed. Yeah, I'm ama- I, I I'm amazed at P- Michael, Trevor. I've seen these characters before, but they make them unique. Mm-hmm. Grand Theft Auto has such a flavor to it. It's like I'm playing Pulp Fiction. Yes. And it's like it's like quality storytelling. I can't wait to do the next mission. Now with this, hey, listen, Jackie Brown wasn't the strongest in Quentin Tarantino's lineup. Mm. I'm just saying. It was a good movie, though. It was a good movie. It was a good movie. Mm. It was a good movie. But as far as what everything else he dropped, you mm. forgot he made Jackie Brown. True. True. You know, true, true. so that's yeah, a good uh, person. You know, so do or so die. True. It's do or die, yeah. Because you can't, you mm. can't give us this. And then if the next Grand Theft Auto, you gonna charge us how much money? Because I know they, yeah, they will, thinking about it. There will be a deluxe edition. Uh, they thinking 1, about it. Oh man, they 1, thinking 000. about it, right? They yeah. thinking about it. If games is going to seventy, well, we Grand Theft Auto. Why do we? Why should we have to pay seventy? Pay a hundred for our games. Yo, listen, yo. Any little thing you do. Any little thing you do, we draw swords, pitchforks, throwing bow and arrows at the creators, dog. Pulling people out there, like Grand, like the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, nah, we don't have time for that. Because not only that, every game has wronged us. People still taste um cyberpunk. Like yo, you guys gave us The Witcher, you, which to go which to go fine. further to go further back. I still haven't forgiven Capcom for the cancellation of Mega Man Legends three. Tim, what you how you feel about physics, Jory, is how Tim holds that hate in his heart for Mega Man Legends three. Bro, <laughs> they drop concept waited. art and everything. So we waited half a whole decade for a sequel to this game on one of the most biggest cliffhangers in the world for the game to be canceled, bro. And then for Capcom to have issues with the Mega Man creator, so you're basically telling me that Mega Man Legends 2 is just the ending. A game that came out on PlayStation 1. Right. But we'll give you Mega Man X and Mega Man 11, though. Don't you worry. Like, we'll still do that. Legends was was amazing. amazing. <laughs> no, nah, Legends was amazing. No, amazing. Le- Legends was Legends was my favorite, bro. The exploration, the different type of weapons that you could utilize, and amazing. just the world. The, Bro, and that was back in the day where you had to use cheat codes to beat the final boss. Bro. You use cheat codes for everything in that game, bro. <laughs> oh man, I think I stayed on. What's her name? Uh, Rock. When that city, you uh, had to uh, fight in the city. In Mega Man um, Legends, Tr- Tron, Trombone, Tron, Trombone, Trombone, bro. She just, I hate her to this day. I hate her. Yeah. When she was in that little crab looking when tank. She, oh, and that tank was clapping me, dog. Bruh. When it was when it was skiing down oh, the road. My. And, you, and you and you couldn't jump out the way fast enough. <laughs> Y'all, you couldn't do nothing. That just <laughs> Bruh, oh man. It, it it was destroying me like them little things on the Mario sixty four that just slide across the water. Mm. Yo. But yeah, to this day I still haven't but, forgiven. But that. I mean to that point though, Tim, it's like Capcom has not for nothing, falling out of people's good graces, won the good graces back, falling back uh, out of good graces. No, it's, it's, no, no. It's, they use, like, you could argue that Resident Evil was their road to redemption. You know, like, they, they, they're, not out, they're not out the gutter yet, but... No, no, no. Here, they, here, here's how I feel. Um, 
with that what Capcom is. I feel like the revolver's still in my hand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With them. It's still in people's hands. They we have it's peace time now. It's peace time now. Like, but you know, look at look yo, yeah. look at um look at um how Resident Evil three Resident Evil three still still People were mad about that game. I'm still mad. Well, well, I agree with Jory because, like, technically, it's like almost like an unnecessary evil type of feel. Like, yeah, like Resident Evil Two was great. Resident Evil Four, okay, okay, wow. Um, yes, Resident Evil Three. I still debate about that because when you really look at it, like, yes, they took away a particular stage that was a very pinnacle, but when you really look at as on a ground scale type of thing, Resident Evil 3 was always Resident Evil Part 2.5. It always was. It always was. And now... It's a DL- yeah, it, yeah. Is a, it, is a, it is a DLC story that they sold you as a whole game. That's what it always was. Yeah. No, That's no, he's, was, he's right? right. He's right. He's right. That's why I was thinking, like, why didn't they bundle it together? Why didn't they just make it one thing? Well, you get, well, 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 they're bundled now together. Now they're oh, bundled. They yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but even PSN before that, story, even before that, like, yeah. like, um, like, yeah, I think the revolver's in the hand because it's like, now think about it. Like, okay, even with um, Devil May Cry 5, when you play it, it was lazy. Like, the stage is the same. I was so angry. I loved it because the playing as the characters was fire. But when I say lazy, like how many times y'all gonna sell me um Virgil? Put him in the game. Why is he the last bro, boss again? Bro, I have bro, was, they, they, bro, they've been selling Virgil since they announced Virgil, bro. Lazy. Have you bro. realized have yeah. you realized every Capcom property with Virgil, he's always been something that you had to buy again? Yeah. Devil May Cry three special edition. Oh, play as Virgil. Yeah. That's acceptable, yeah. right? That first time, right? That's it. Devil I let it pass. Four. Now Special four? Edition. Nah, that's Marvel's when I was like, okay, Virgil. yeah, they mer- they merking it. Marvel Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom three players Virgil. Mm-hmm. Oh, DMC reboot definitive edition players Virgil. Oh, oh, the remake is gone. The reboot remake is gone. We're back to Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry five <laughs> special edition. They, bro, they've Play, sold yeah. you Virgil Boy. five Boy, times. Five times. Five times. And um, you know, the community wow. now now that the thing is with these games, you have to understand they don't die no more. It's not like I gotta pull out a cartridge to, and blow the old the old Nintendo sixty four. They're here now. Yeah. The Resident Your Evil system will die before the game dies. The, exactly. The game still exists. And now Metroid Prime is alive. Mm-hmm. Before then, yo, people was pulling out their GameCubes to give to give you commentary. On YouTube now, it's here, and it's it's a high definition. Mm-hmm. Come on, like now that you have this stuff, we don't we do not have the luxury not anymore, and we're definitely getting tired. So, the um with Capcom, the guns is still up in the air, man. If this if Street Fighter if this Street Fighter was trash, oh no, trust it, me, it would have been it. Yeah, Kurt, put, it didn't been. matter. Didn't matter what Resident Evil you dropped. Yeah, yeah. Chaos matter. on the interwebs. They was like, gonna have to drop bugs. drop you yeah. Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter Nine, <laughs> for it to make some <laughs> dent, like where you could drink coffee, <laughs> talk to your own boy. They was gonna turn it into a you know um, a Fortnite if they had to, whatever they needed to to survive. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But they ain't good. They ain't good standings now. But they can't because the Monster Hunter. Listen, the thing with these these properties, they have so much vocal people. You can't mess up on any of them. You think Monster Hunter people don't talk? They they do, and I and I guess just to to bring it back to Rockstar because of course we need, we need to wrap things up. Yeah, um, so I, I think it, it's now you're good. I, I yeah. just think it's one of those things where it's like the reason why I asked about Rockstar in particular, right? And I said the reason why Capcom had like a seesaw relationship with fans is that Rockstar, other than their publisher, right, other than their parent company doing these uh, remakes, Rockstar. Really, only actual literal offense would have been Red Dead Two. They haven't done anything on their own that we would consider like, okay, this was them just like messing up. That's and enough. it's not like these games were bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, you play Red Dead Two. Red Dead Two is a very complete game. You know, like oh, it, it wasn't 
multiplayer was trash. No, you and who's the thing? Red Dead ones. And the thing was mm-hmm. yeah, exactly when people talk mm-hmm. about one's multiplayer, that energy mm-hmm. translates and dies as soon as it hits part two. Bad taste in my mouth. Not to mention, mm-hmm. the hope was that you would later pick things up, pick up the pace on Red Dead Redemption Two. You killed all the momentum, right? Mm-hmm. You killed all the momentum. You see, you cl- shut down servers. Oh, come on, it's over now. Now there's a bad taste in my mouth. Then you got bad taste in my mouth two and three. The most iconic franchises didn't take the time to flush out and remake. Oh, it took too much time. Now you guys have the resources. You guys have the resources. If they're you one guys, of the biggest game pub, gaming companies. Biggest, in the you industry. guys got like sixteen people to turn <laughs> sixteen people to make a nose. Like that's enough mm-hmm. manpower, and you got more money to spare than that. You know. Um, but yeah, guys. I mean, I don't, I think with these gaming companies, it's 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 getting to a point to where the gaming community is the most vocal community. Period, man. So. You can't afford to mess these things up because we remember, we do not forget easily, man. Yeah, and I think I think to all of our points, like when you got to spend seventy dollars in this economy that only gets more and more expensive, you know, you're not only talking about time invested, you're talking about my literal dollar amount. You mm-hmm. know, like seventy dollars in some areas, that's a pretty good night out. You know, that that's yeah. a bill. You know, mm-hmm. and time is taking on Naruto. You know what I'm saying? The way y'all boys talk about it, I feel like Naruto will get clapped tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that time skip going. They're gonna live. That time skip will is going to determine the future of that franchise. Is all I'll say with that. Um, but yeah, I, I think that that's a, a good way to close us out for uh, again the director's cut. You know, I think it, it's it's. Uh, harmonious that it ends up being longer than the original recording because you know you guys get you know the, the people that are listening they get an extra uh you know uh details added to the topics and i think it, it says a lot to our own diversity of being able to kind of reapproach these same topics in a different way you know a lot of it wasn't just a rehashing of like tim tell me about that point you made last time at minute 45 you know about about such and such like i think it's good that we were able to still kind of read new life into some of these things that we talked about um on the original recording uh, but you know, thank you guys who uh, who listen to us on a on a weekly basis. Thank you guys who, for us who have the patience. You know, when life is laughing for us, you know, we're not able to get out the content the way we like we, to. Yeah, we're going through it, boy. That nine to five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> life is laughing daily at this point. Um, Gotta fight Akuma every day. I go outside, dog. Just bro, my what? <laughs> To get guy, out of bed in the morning. Guy waiting in the bush. <laughs> guy right there waiting in the bush, dog. Jeez. Man. But, uh, yeah, we do appreciate everyone that takes time to, to like, subscribe, comment. Um, appreciate you know everyone running up the numbers on uh, um, our Zorro take. It, you know, it continues to do numbers. Every week I got a new stat for y'all. Oh, <laughs> Every man. week it tops us in clips That's of, cool. like, views. Yeah, you know, so, you know, thank you everyone who takes the time to tune in. Again, we are all on Spotify, you know, Apple, iHeartRadio, wherever you want to tune in, we're there. And, you know, this has been Antonius the Gamer, Super SSS Rank. Oh, go ahead, bro. Um, we, will, we will soon start to play games so you guys can finally see our our, our, our passions in motion. You know, not yeah, just... It won't just be us observing it on the, on the pod. Yeah. We yeah. will implement, you know, um, actual streams. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, again, life lifing, right? You gotta <laughs> gotta allocate resources <laughs> differently. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, but yeah, we, there will be more. You know, I'm, I'm always looking for new ways to uh, improve it on the back end. There'll be more clips in the pod and things like that. So, you know, again, just thank you guys, you know, and, and appreciate you guys joining us on the journey episode 11. So, again, this is Antonius the Gamer, joined by Super SSS Rank and Mikael Smith, and this is the Gamer Podcast. Good night, everybody.